true freshman Farrow Cooper is back deep. The speedster there. We'll see it some wide receiver. And Andrew Baggett. 41 touchbacks on the year on 57 pickoffs. Yet this one is returnable. Sidney Rhodes on the return. And he struggles to get it out near the 20 yard line. So they will turn things over to Dylan Thompson. Remember, Connor Shaw injured his knee, was limited in practice. So Thompson gets the call, a six foot three junior. Has a couple of touchdown passes on the year, a few touchdown runs. Many thought they would see more of him this year, but Shaw played so well that Thompson's playing time was injured. Did start two games last year and threw for over 300 yards and three touchdowns in each. And he's going to pass on his first play and gets it complete to Bruce Ellington. Let's look at the impact players brought to you by Chick-fil-A. We can talk all we want about Dylan Thompson, but Mike Davis is the guy who makes this offense run. And on the outside, Demir Bird is a guy who has great speed and can get down the field. The Michael Sam we talked about and Shane Ray, when he comes in number 56, he can change the game. Both those guys, outstanding pass rushers. Shane Ray had a sack and a forced fumble against Georgia that Michael Sam scooped and scored on. It's a nine yard reception by Ellington. So it'll be second and one as they go I formation with the SEC's leading rusher and Mike Davis who is taken down for a loss by Michael Sam. That's just an outstanding call and understanding tendencies of that offense. They took Michael Sam and slanted him inside. Now defensive coordinator Dave Steckel he's a big part of this turnaround he understands his personnel he knows he's not real big so to counter that he likes to use a lot of movement and Sam delivered that is 14 tackles for loss on the year for the senior defensive end Sam and it backs them up to a third and three Thompson he short hopped that trying to get it to Davis out of the backfield as that front four continues to get pressure on opposing quarterbacks. That's one of the things everybody talks about numbers and sacks and Michael Sam certainly has them but it's been his play in the run game that has separated him from others. Tyler Hull on to punt away to the dangerous Marcus Murphy. And the fair catch at about the 29 yard line. A 44 yard punt by Hall. So, Matty Mock, the redshirt freshman, his second start after coming into the win at Georgia when James Franklin was injured. And then last week against Florida, 18 of 36, 295, pass for a touchdown, rush for a touchdown. He's got a lot of confidence. That's his most impressive trait. The bigger the game, the bigger he tries to play, or in reality, does play. And he goes a little too far to the inside on his first pass attempt. He was looking for Eric Waters. Mark was a high school hero, parade all American, two time Ohio player of the year, back home at Kenton High School in Ohio. Henry Josie, unable to get much on the right corner that time, tackled by Victor Hampton. Let's look at the impact players brought to you by Chick fil A for this side of the match. Well, you talked about the first one, just had that carry, Henry Josie, and he's been a big part of this turnaround. The Damian Washington is receiver like much like Bird can get deep Clowney we've talked about he's a guy who can change the game and the other defensive end is, a, is a Chaz Sutton is a player with excellent skills really needs to pick his game up as he's just as capable of turning a game around third down and ten for Maul. he gets free trying to run for it 
And he's able to come up right at the line to make as he lowered the shoulders in that final yard and a half before he was brought down by Roberts. Well, that's a piece of the puzzle. Tess, you either have it or you don't. And Matty Mock has it. First down run now by Josie. And just a couple of yards there by the junior Josie, who's really become the inspirational story of this team, back with great production after a catastrophic knee injury in 2011 that had him out all of last year. And the year before, keep in mind, Tess, he was leading the nation by a long shot in rushing when he hurt his knee. And he's back. Breakout year. Back in 2011, over 1,100 yards rushing at the time of the injury. That is intercepted off the deflection that time as it bounced off the pads and right into the hands of Kawan Lewis. It looks like it hit Washington. Marquise Roberts was in on that play. So Matty Moore. Yeah, right off the defender. And Lewis corrals it. South Carolina on offense when we come back. Scoreless early here as we continue Dr. Pepper's road to the conference championships. The interception moments ago by South Carolina's Kawan Lewis. Yeah, Marquise Roberts undercut. Watch the ball. See, watch Washington's eyes right here. Goes back to the defender. And he misses. The ball is right on. Hits him right in the kisser. Pops up in the air and it goes the other way. He needed to be eyes on the ball, not the defender. Plus 10 turnover margin for Mizzou, a big reason why they've run their record to 7-0. That was just the sixth interception of the season this year for the Gamecocks. So they start on the 47. Thompson, with time, goes downfield, and that was just beyond the outstretched arms of Jarrell Adams. One of the things I believe that this Missouri defense has to be able to do particularly early test is get some hits on Dylan Thompson if they can get some pressure and hits on him he seems to be a little bit different in the pocket not as easy and not as solid in the pocket as you'd like to see him for Shaw the quarterback with the better feet more mobility among the two for South Carolina second and ten downfield again and that's off the fingers of Rory Busta Anderson as he's been looking for his fluid and tall tight end targets early on here, he was covered by brothers. And the reason that ball had to come out quick, watch Michael Sam again. With that hard inside move on Brandon Shell, beats him cleanly and gets to the quarterback. And that's what they need. They need to be able to get pressure on that quarterback and let them know they're going to be there all night. And this can start to take their tolls. Michael Sam charging in on you all night long. Third and ten. And that was Demir Bird, the target, but he was well out of bounds. So two possessions and two three and outs for South Carolina. And more pressure from defensive coordinator Dave Steckles front four. Again, Shane Ray got pressure the last time. Michael Sam, a couple of them. He's got those guys playing. When you can do that, you can play a lot of coverage behind it. Spurrier's team unable to take advantage of the interception as Hole comes in to punt away again and takes a really good bounce for the Gamecocks inside the 10 yard line. Mock back out there for his next at bat when we come back. Good times in the show me state with what's going on about two hours to our east. They got the World Series fever. They got an undefeated football team here. And they got the Cardinals taking on the Red Sox. Game three of the World Series. Plus, you go west and you find yourself an undefeated NFL team in the Kansas City Chiefs in what is a tremendous sports weekend that will carry right through Monday Night Football with the Rams. So Matty Malk, the redshirt freshman, Back out there after the defense did the job. He had the interception on their first offensive series. And he hands off to Russell Hansbrough. 
And Hansborough is taken down at the line of scrimmage. And Phil Dukes and JT Surratt in defensively. So, Tess, what you're watching right now in their run game, they're not running at Jadavian Clown. They're going the other way and running to their right side and allowing Clowney to just pursue from the back side. Clowney is coming off an impressive effort last week against Tennessee. They tried to block him one on one, did the balls. Now they won the game, but they, they lost that battle. Oh, they lost it big time. Here's your second and ten. And once again, it's Hansbro. And he gets out to the ten yard line. It'll be third and one. One thing I believe it's important for both these teams to do is they're going to have to remain patient because offensively for Missouri they need to stay with the run game keeping in mind while they may have confidence in their young quarterback he's still just a freshman and defensively you have to think the same thing don't try to get greedy just rush with your four handle the run game by itself and play good behind it third and seven for Mark Some movement on the left side of the line as Mark fires off incomplete and Clowney got out of his stance and started rushing. And he says, that's my bad. My mistake. Offside, defense number seven. The penalty is five yards. The feet third down. So that'll shorten it up to a third and two. There's been a lot said about Jadavian Clowney. Some good, some not so good. When you put the tape on, though, one thing becomes abundantly clear. If he wants to play, there's no one better. That guy decided to play last week, and he put on a show. He was off the charts. Even forget the stats, he affected the game probably in half the plays of the game. He had two and a half tackles for loss in the first quarter alone. Mark looks like he's going to be about a half a yard short there on third and two as Gerald Dixon wrapped him up. So the punt team will come on out for Mizzou. And there is Christian Brinser who averages 47 yards a punt. It was unproven coming into the year, but he's been dependable. Farrell Cooper lines up at about the 40-yard line. This is driven back, and it takes a good bounce, and he tries to field it right there. How dangerous was that by Cooper as he had a coverage man sitting right on top of him? Scoreless early here in Columbia, Missouri. Now oh, the true freshman oh, making man. a close call there. He is just superb. 29 touchdowns framed against only three interceptions. South Carolina's Mike Davis and look at the leg drive by Davis averaging 125 yards a game this year Matt hey he's the guy I'm waiting to see now not a very tall guy in terms of stature only five foot nine 215 to 218 pounds powerful guy but test great balance excellent vision does not go down with one single tackle or an arm tackle he's a powerful guy and runs through tackles and coaches told us this week more breakaway speed than they ever thought Got a couple 75 yard runs on the year. Here's the end around. The flag is down as Demir Bird, for the moment, will have a first down for South Carolina, but we will check on the flag. Demir Bird is the track guy. He's the guy who can really get down the field fast, and you like to get him out in space. Illegal formation, offense, more than four players lined up in the backfield. Five yard penalty, it remains. Second down. Uh, Ken Williamson, capable SEC referee tonight, so they're calling for more than four in the backfield there. That will kind of negate that Mike Davis run set up about a second and eight. Mike Davis, 10 rushing touchdowns on the season. 6.7 yards per carry. Tessie also catches the ball well. That, that's one of the guys you want to find ways to get the ball in his hands. 
And they lean on him a little more with Connor Shaw not there to provide the running game that he typically does. As Dylan Thompson gets the start tonight. Second and nine. Good for the screen pass to Anderson. And look at him explode. He was just tripped up, but Rory Anderson at 6'5, 218 for a tight end. He is a long strider. He goes for 23 yards. Yeah, he was a shoelace away from breaking this thing. You're going to watch him back inside. He's not very big at 218, 20 pounds, but right there, just a little bit, he gets him. As if he doesn't. Josh Gibson doesn't get that shoelace. He's still running. Here's Thompson again. This time inside screen to Bruce Ellington. And Ellington spins his way for a gain of nine. Let's check in in the studio and Wendy Nix. Wendy? Joe Tess, thank you. We check on this pivotal matchup in the Pac-12. It was UCLA who shot the Ducks, got on the board early, but how about the fake punt? The Big hole here for Rodney Hardrick, 67 yards. That sets up the equalizer. Oregon punches it in, and it's seven all in Eugene. And a good one going out there at Eugene, number 12 UCLA, number three Oregon. And once again, they will work Mike Davis as he gets to the 39-yard line. That's one thing that this South Carolina offense enjoys is a huge size advantage up front. This is a massive offensive line. And you just want to let Mike Davis start to ground the ball into them. And if you can be patient with that, that size difference will make a difference as it goes. Regardless of the movement you give up, up, up uh, with your defense, sooner or later, they'll get you. Here's Davis. And he breaks free and muscles his way inside the 35. You talk about the size and their left tackle, Corey Robinson, six foot eight, 341 pounds. Yeah, and still getting better, much better. I mean, he's he's athletic for that height. Usually, for a guy who's that that tall, you can get under him, but he can bend. And then you look on the other side, Brandon Shell, well, Art Shell's nephew, old Hall of Famer, another big man also. He's 6'6", 323. And he goes right behind right tackle this time on second and four. Only gets a couple of yards. But those bookends are very good for South Carolina. Harold Brantley with the tackle. And Donovan Bonner, number eight, came down and had a nice shot to set up this third down on Mike Davis. Mike Davis, he, he shucked that first tackle. He's tough to bring down as he gets to this third and two. Donovan Bonner is actually coming off the field with the medical staff helping him after that last play. The senior strong side starting linebacker. As the Gamecocks face third and two here. And we'll check over in the sidelines. Davis could not spin free at all. He had no chance on the inside with Lucas Vincent and Andrew Wilson filling that hole. Yeah, Andrew Wilson read it right away. It's a direct read for the middle linebacker. Watch the fullback. Comes right at him. And he goes to the outside. Nobody touches Wilson. He comes clean, and Vincent finishes it off. Nice job of Vincent working off an inside block and sets up fourth down. Offense stays on the field. They say no to a 49 yard field goal attempt. They got a true freshman kicker whose long is only 41. So the offense stays out here on fourth and two. Thompson going to try to run it himself and he gets it. Smart offense. So what does he do, Tess? He comes up and you know that Dylan Thompson's not a great runner. But what they do is they spread the field and they get everybody out. They take the back, they offset them, and then he kind of leads right through. And because everybody's spread trying to get up the field for the pass, he just takes it right up inside. Serviceable and maybe not a great runner, but definitely a smart runner. Yeah, absolutely. And that was, you know, that's that's the way to scheme a defense. For a fresh first down, and that was well overthrown as Ellington was streaking down the near sideline. Dylan 
Jalen Thompson last week and into this week, Tess, for some reason, he's overthrown quite a few guys. Now, generally, two things when, you, when a quarterback's overthrown. He's overstriding, and it drops his shoulders, he gets out of bounds, or number two, sometimes when he's, with his throwing arm, he'll get under the ball. He'll dip his elbow back underneath, and it has a tendency to take off. They run the option here on second and ten as Davis tries to get to the outside, but he struggled to do so with John Gibson forcing him out. Yeah, that's good. That's good defense. And what that is, when you're going to defend the option, most of the time you go with assignment football, and they did just that. So the quarterback, you have to defend the mesh point. And what defensive coordinator Dave Steckel has him doing is attacking the quarterback. Make him get rid of the ball right away so it defines itself. Keep in mind the best cornerback, E.J. Gaines, is not available tonight. He's out with a leg injury. Gibson's just a redshirt freshman trying to hold down one of those corner spots. Third and six. Thompson's going to go for it all. And too far again as he was looking for a streaking Nick Jones. Now they just ran out of field right there. That ball was... It was a well-thrown ball just just too far and he was going to need more room to be able to beat that coverage. Let's look at his throw motion see if he gets out. He got a little bit under that ball. Now when you're throwing deep sometimes you have to do that. That's not bad coverage. So on comes the true freshman Elliot Fry with the 40 yard field goal attempt. You know we noticed pregame a little bit of a wind in your face kicking in this direction. New. And he's no good there. He was six of seven on field goal attempts coming in, but Missouri holds there. Missed field goal by Elliott Fry. Arms crossed on the head ball coach as Fry's kick goes off to the left. Coach Steck loving that D. Here they only have 17 total yards so far against this South Carolina defense man and they've only attempted two passes both in completions. That's the part of their game that they need to pick up. Here's Matty Maw. Downfield he goes and that should have been picked off by Jimmy Legree. Legree needed to be Legreedy, and he yeah. wasn't. He let it go because the receiver went right past him, and the ball's underthrown, so they get something crossed here. Matty Mark goes up, under pressure, not afraid to make the throw. Washington goes by, and Legree was not Legreedy. No, he's going to cringe when he watches film this week. Absolutely. Should have been his third interception on the year. There's Mark on second and ten downfield again and this time to a wide open Marcus Lucas and Lucas able to spin his way down to the South Carolina 45 yard line a 32 yard reception. I'm going to show you something here Tess that you just you can't teach you either have it or you don't have it. And Kelsey Quarles drilled Matty Mark on that last one and he just stuck right in there knew he was going to get hit and delivered the throw. Marcus Murphy in the backfield here on first down as Mark spins out of it extends the play tucks and runs and goes head first that time down to the 41 yard line met by Diggs. Yes you and I both talked about this. he needs to be careful when he's running out there is nothing behind him. Yeah he's got a freshman Eddie Prince unproven on everything he's it. That's the last line of defense. Quarterback number one and quarterback number three on what was the depth chart. Now, James Franklin and Corbin Bergstresser. They're left with Matty Mock, the redshirt freshman, and a true freshman. They're trying to redshirt in Prince. He pitches it forward that time, just freestyles it to Buddy Sasser, and it's a first down Mizzou. Oh, he's a gamer, this Matty Mock. Matty Farr, that's what I like to call him. <laughs> that's exactly what that looked like. This kid is having fun, and he is in control right here. Look at that. Knows exactly where he was. That's a well-pitched ball. 
That's that it quality that coach's son and former high school hot shot. Now he slings it to the end zone and it's to the outside of Sasser. So now you see Matty Mark running all over the place and you want to know exactly where's the pass rush. When you say where's the pass rush with South Carolina, it's where's Jadavian Clowney. And so Justin Britt number, number 68 right there. And then you're also going to see number six. Uh, drawing a blank right now. Marcus Murphy. Yeah, Marcus Murphy, the, uh, the running backs. They're chipping him. Not a dedicated double, but they know exactly where he's at. And they want to make sure he's not going to come clean off the edge. Here is Murphy now. And he is tracked down. As that was Sky Moore, the freshman linebacker who's been really emerging for South Carolina. They like his upside. Okay, now that time, Clowney did not make the tackle, but he made the play. I want to show you what happens. They're going to dedicate two people. And so what they're trying to do is take care of Clowney and then slip off of Clowney to the second level. Well, Clowney gets such penetration, that leaves the linebacker free because the second level can't be had. Doing that to the short side of the field as well. Third and ten now. The green line you see is the field goal range of Andrew Baggett, the fine kicker for Missouri. And here he goes back to Sasser, who's able to sprint ahead and move the chains. That's a nice hit on the sideline. But that's a great throw in a tight spot. Watch this. Right on the outside, you saw Hampton, number 27, coming clean. And you also saw, if you notice, they drop, dropped Jadavian Clowney in the flat. To me, that's a waste of talent. Let him rush. Murphy again. And after being stacked up, he rolls down to the 11-yard line as it was Clowney and Holloman tackling Murphy. You know, there's, there's other guys on this defense other than Clowney. That Kelsey Quarles is a really good football player. Chaz Sutton on the other side, number 90. That's a good player. A lot of folks expected more production out of that guy, Chaz Sutton, this year with all the double and triple teaming that J.D. was getting on the other side. Second and six now. Murphy again. And he gets past the initial would-be tacklers that included Clowney. And a heck of an athletic play as the saying they're marking him, I believe, at the two-yard line. The PA announcer in the crowd is celebrating a touchdown, but it's hard to see an official sign. I didn't by see the it. officials. I don't know if the officials ever raised their hands, but it's a touchdown. As well, Murphy slipped his way in. You can see he stayed in the entire time. Bag it on for the extra point. The two officials on the sideline there were looking at each other for a moment. Yes, you know, one thing drives me crazy is when those officials haven't showered and are afraid to raise their arms. <laughs> That's a mistake. <laughs> hey, you know who can raise his arms? Murphy, an 11-yard run. And you know who he got by? The All-America, J.D. Clowney. I'm Wendy Nix in our college football studios with a Taco Bell studio update. Oklahoma trying to hand Texas Tech their first loss of the season. And plays like this will go a long way to that end. How about the Colton Bester on the reverse? Finds the hole, zigzags, and finds his way into the end zone. Oklahoma leading 35-24 over Texas Tech. The row field at Memorial Stadium, Wendy, is rocking here. Homecoming weekend in Como, number five, Mizzou. Up 7 nothing as Marcus Murphy, the do-it-all guy, got past the well-hyped guy, Jadavion Clowney. As Murphy made a brilliant 11-yard run on the far sideline there. And here is Farrow Cooper from the end zone. And Cooper showing a burst of speed, and then he is driven back. <laughs> 
That's Golden 33 and Washington number two. Oh, and Singleton's also number That's two. That's the other number two there. And Singleton and Golden getting involved defensive on special teams. Hard hitting, charged up atmosphere here at 7 0. As they try to take a big step closer to an SEC East title and a trip to the championship game. The surprise team of college football this year, the Tigers. Mike Davis. Was about three yards that time. Because one thing that is abundantly clear with the South Carolina offense. With Connor Shaw's feet out of the equation, it's a completely different offense. Connor Shaw, starting quarterback, averages 56 rushing yards a game. But he was limited in practice this week. He is suited up. He injured his knee against Tennessee. So Dylan Thompson gets the start. And second down, he goes to Ellington. And Ellington will be about a yard and a half short of the line there as Andrew Wilson made the tackle. 20 seconds left in the quarter. Let's see if they just run around. And the clock will hit zeros here. Missouri off to a good start. Marcus Murphy, the 11-yard touchdown run as Mizzou is trying to go 8-0 for the first time since 1960. ESPN, Joe Tessator, Matt Millen, Maria Taylor with you here in Columbia, Missouri. 7 0, number five Tigers. As they've lined up another ranked opponent coming off back to back wins over ranked opponents. First time they've done that since 1976. Tessis is third and short in the first quarter. South Carolina was 0 for 4 in third downs. Mike Davis. He tries to solve that problem as he just nudges ahead and is able to move the sticks. This Missouri run has been so impressive. Number seven, Georgia, you know the injury problems they've had, and Florida was banged up, but Missouri's playing tremendous football. If you look at the point differential, winning their games by at least 15 plus points all the way, and now South Carolina comes to town. They haven't beaten three straight ranked opponents since 1939. And here is Gary Pinkle with an opportunity to make history. Dylan Thompson as he goes downfield and lofts it right into the hands of Demir Bird. Good concentration by Bird to stay with it as Braylon Webb had coverage on Bird. That's a nice job of securing the catch getting that foot down and then making sure he controls the ball all the way through 26 yard reception as you see him clutching that ball tight to his body remember firm control the ball all the way through the process of the catch there and as bird puts them in position to respond after the Mizzou score Davis again. This time tries to get himself just short of the 35 yard line. As Davis has been the workhorse for much of the year for South Carolina. He has six 100 yard games coming into tonight. Thompson goes to him out of the backfield. And he's going to be about a yard and a half short as he was tackled by Randy Ponder. 
One thing that South Carolina is doing very well is getting into third and manageables. Now in the first quarter, they didn't have a good, they didn't do a good job of it, but last time out, they got the first. They're in the same situation again, third and short. Remember Thompson converted the fourth down, running it himself, letting things spread out. And smartly following that opening. The play clock is down to four seconds as he lines back up. And Davis will charge ahead. The ball came loose, and Missouri falls on it. That is Marcus Golden coming up with the football. Either Ponder. I couldn't quite see, but it looked like Ponder may have gotten his arm in there, number seven. Or maybe Matt White, 17. I couldn't quite see it. Golden also tries to strip it. White's in the middle of it. So just when South Carolina started mar marching, a fumble recovery by Mizzou. I want to show you some non-stop play. See this guy right here? That's Golden, Marcus Golden. Now he quit, he's blocked and he never quits. And he keeps coming through, gets help from Matt White, forces the fumble and then recovers it. That is as good a job as you're gonna see in terms of high effort, never quitting. He was blocked, but he refused to quit and he made a big play. Missouri's 19th takeaway of the season and for South Carolina their 10th fumble loss the 116th in FBS in fumbles lost turnovers have framed the season for both teams and now shaking loose is Henry Josie he's an impressive guy Tess keep in mind we talked about him earlier he was leading the country a couple years ago had a devastating knee injury one that they said he may not even be able to walk again, and here he is running at a high level again. Second and one, and he gets the first down. And according to Missouri's in-house orthopedic surgeon, Henry Josie's knee injury was one of the worst he's ever seen. All the ligaments, all the tendons torn, ruptured, and courageously he rehabbed and worked his way back into this prime form. You see what he was able to do last week against Florida, and now being utilized here early on on this drive. Clowney's been quiet. Here's Moore. Clowney chasing him, and he throws it to the near sideline to Doriel Green Beckham. Let's check in with Wendy. Joe Tess, thank you very much. We go back to Eugene. Seven all, but here come the Ducks. Byron Marshall. The long touchdown run, and that would put Oregon up. It's 14-7 just into the second quarter. Yet another talented weapon for the Ducks. Marshall, very good every down running back for Mark Helfrich's team. Second and three. Maw quickly gets rid of it as Darius White was the receiver, and a flag is down with the coverage by Jimmy Legree. You can see him at the top of your screen coming inside. Yeah, it's interference definitely interference a play. Defense number 15. The penalty will place the ball at the spot of the foul and includes an automatic first down. Let's go down to the field to Maria. Guys, the South Carolina defensive line seems really frustrated, and Deke Adams has been getting after him, telling him to get their eyes right, get the call in, and start playing your tails off. He actually spent a lot of time with Clowney while they were on the sideline, just trying to get his engine going, keeping him in it, because he seemed a little upset while he's sitting by himself without his team. Deke, the defensive line coach for South Carolina, is Whammy Ward, the coordinator. And he knows that offensive line of Missouri's up for a rematch after Cloudy and company got the best of them last year. Mock now on first down is going to tuck it, run it. A penalty flag is down, so we will check on that as a spirited run by Mock gets him down inside the 30 yard line, chased down by Hampton, an 18 yard run by the redshirt freshman. This kid's exciting, Tess. This kid is not awed by anything. He doesn't care who's on the other side. He sees the field, 
He makes good decisions, not afraid to run it, not afraid to throw it in, not afraid of mistakes. That's the key. Holding offense, number 61. The penalty is 10 yards from the previous spot. Repeat first down. See on the sidelines, that's Kaiwan Lewis. And as he ran off the field after the last play. Remember, he had the interception in the first quarter tonight. And he looks to be in some serious pain there. So the ball is brought back to the 47 yard line of Mizzou. And that means it's first and 20 from there. Play clock was running down. Prior to the snap, lay of game, offense number seven, five yard penalty, repeat first down. And Gary Pinkle frustrated as the offense all of a sudden is going in reverse. Yeah, it took more than the yards, it's the momentum. It's the momentum that Missouri had and kind of had or seemingly had South Carolina on its heels. First and 25. Here's Josie. And Josie gets back to about the 48-yard line where Philip Dukes made the tackle. One thing that this Missouri offense does enjoy is a height advantage with these receivers as opposed to the defensive backs. This is a tall receiving core. And push comes to shove when he gets in trouble. Put the ball up high and let his guys go get it. Lucas, you see right there, number 85 is six foot five. Josie now on second and 19 as he crosses midfield. You talk about the matchup and the height for the Missouri wide receivers. It's like they feel the basketball team out of there. Former number one recruit in the country, DGB is six six. Lucas six five. Washington, smallest of the three at six four. And the guy they like to get after. Uh, with his speed down the field is Washington. He's the one that can blow the top off of coverages. Uh, keep in mind right now, this South Carolina defense is not going to let that happen. They're in a two deep look. They're daring them to run the football or throw the ball underneath on this third and 13. That was deflected by Roberts. Mark may have forced that a bit. Roberts was sitting there before the intended receiver. See, what he got was impatient. See, all he had to do was force that. See, Tess, what they're doing is they had two safeties deep, and then you had five people underneath. And so what you do with the quarterback then is you, you force the coverage by using your feet to the line of scrimmage. He stopped a little short and tried to force it in. It backfired. We need to scatter with that short punt by Brinser there. 7 0, Missouri on top. Dylan Thompson in the offense for South Carolina when we come back. For him at Kent State, he coached for him for many years, and Pinkle says this is Don James's program here at Missouri. The organization of this program is his. All the Genius of organizing and attention to detail. He followed in that path. Thompson now, and he gets it complete to Demir Bird with a good burst for a first down. And, you know, Pinkle talked about when they upset number one Oklahoma, and he called Don James on his ride home. And instead of showering him with congr congratulations, James, the Hall of Famer, said to Pinkle, Your next game you coach will be the toughest game you ever coach. He didn't like it at the time, but now that's a lesson learned as he goes piece by piece in this undefeated season this year. This is a good completion here to Bruce Ellington in stride. A flag is down, but Thompson hit him fluidly in stride. Nicely done, and he gets outside the pocket. He's not void of, of run skills. See if this comes back as two flags are down. Just inside the 40 yard line. Yeah, they both saw the same thing. It looked like a hold by the receiver. Holding, Holding. offense number three. The penalty is 10 yards. Spot of the foul. 
will pick first down. It was three years ago this weekend when Missouri upset BCS number one Oklahoma. That's the game we're talking about where Hinkle called Don James and got the message. They lost their next couple games. And here he's been taking it piece by piece of thinking about the way James would approach things. And he'll be speaking at the services for the Hall of Fame coach in Seattle tomorrow afternoon. He's on a flight first thing in the morning. Sean Carson now with the carry for South Carolina as he gets it to the Missouri 45, tackled by Wilson. Number seven, Sean Carson. When South Carolina offensively with Steve Spurrier, when they're patient with the run game, they've been able to move the football. They've been putting themselves in third and short, very third and manageable. And so that, when they're doing that, that's when they've been at their best. See the balanced offensive attack for South Carolina, second and six here. Carson remains in the backfield with Thompson. That's a first down catch to the very active Demir Burr to the 30 yard line tackled by Webb. And so if you're Dave Steckel, the defensive coordinator, what you want to start to do right now is say, okay, we're going to, we got to concentrate on Demir Burr. They're going to him a lot. Let's make somebody else beat us. That's nice protection and a really nice throw to a spot for Burr. Thompson spinning that right over the middle to Burr, the fastest player on the team. He's track and field for South Carolina as well. And this is Carson again now getting some extended work in place of Mike Davis. Andrew Wilson with the tackle at the 25, gain of five. A little bit different style for Sean Carson. Probably not as powerful, but still that same compact body and explosive. Thompson has completed his last six. His favorite target, Bird, is in the near side. Ellington inside the five. He bobbled it and then secured it. It'll be first in goal, South Carolina. Got the call in from the sideline. They saw that they were staying in that cover two and staying in a two shell with your safeties back. It's incumbent upon the linebacker to get a jam on that slot receiver. You cannot ever let a slot receiver run clean to the next level. It's impossible almost for the safety to be able to make that play. Sprints to the near side and that is incomplete as he looked Ellington's way again and a flag does come in as Braylon Webb had the coverage on Bruce Ellington. Ellington showing a little bit of that point guard quickness right there in the slot. He is a two sport star. Pass interference defense number nine. The foul occurred in the end zone. Therefore by rule the penalty will place the ball at the two yard line and includes an automatic first down. Yeah, the way, which it didn't really see on that first one you may see here. You see that left arm? wrapped on the waist and he wraps around it and gets the knocks the ball away the guy who calls it is the back judge standing under the goalpost Mike Davis comes in on first and goal and Mike Davis fumble fumbled again Missouri ball. Oh, this is a disaster for Davis. It was Matt Hoke coming in hard, the defensive tackle. And a golden opportunity is ruined. Oh, Hoke got his got his left arm. He took an inside move, reached back with that left arm right on the ball. A fortuitous move by Hoke. Watch this right there. Ball's down. Bonner comes up with it. Missouri ball. And we'll be back right after this. And 
got to cool off those Missouri Tigers on 7 and 0. That defense is red hot. Two fumble recoveries at key times. Moments ago down at the goal line, Mike Davis, the running back, star running back for South Carolina, fumbled away the ball again. Back to back carries for Davis. Fumbles lost inside the 30 and then down here at the goal line. We'll see if Mizzou's offense can create some breathing room. Marcus Murphy is taken down and give his forward progress, but he was met right away that time. JT Surratt and Marquise Roberts surging in, and there is Mike Davis who's thinking things over. And this one have been a disastrous first half for him. He's had such a great year as the SEC's leading rusher, but that Mizzou front swiping it away. Murphy again, this time just beyond the four yard line. South Carolina really has outplayed Missouri in this first half, and because of the turnovers, they're down on the scoreboard. 192 total yards for South Carolina to Mizzou's 127. The turnovers have helped all year long with this Missouri defense. They came in number five in turnover margin in the country. Redshirt freshman from his own end zone. And he gets it complete wide open is LaDamian Washington. And could this be? Wow! How about that? 96 yards of glory. a couple things had to happen one you had to have good protection watch him on the top side two you've got to get on top of the coverage so they run a little slant pattern and then three he's got to beat the tackle and he does all three of them 96 yards unbelievable Kind of stuff that happens in dream seasons, isn't it? Matty Mock, strike, score, 96 by LaDamian Washington. A fumble on the goal line, and then magic at the other end. When he died, we were told to always remember. Time moments that'll be showcased on the SEC network as Matty Mock, I mean, let the newfound legend grow as from his own end zone he went for it and connected with LaDamian Washington for a 96 yard touchdown catch and what a 14 point swing that was Farrell Cooper now from about the five and he's driven out at about the 24 let's check in with Wendy Nix Jets coming up on the Outback Steakhouse Halftime Report. We're all tied up in Eugene. We'll have a check on UCLA and Oregon. The top teams in the country played, well, like the top teams in the country. And Johnny Menzel looking every bit back on track. We'll have the highlights coming up at the half. Thanks, Wendy. I look forward to that. I thought Johnny Manziel was superb today, Matt. This is a guy whose throwing shoulder was so injured this week that they were questioning whether or not he could play. He goes out there, was nearly flawless from the start of the game as they cruise to yet another win. And Thompson now in a two touchdown hole as he goes to his reliable tight end, Busta Anderson. The big story for the offense of South Carolina, Mike Davis. You can see. Both times he was stripped, once by Golden and once by Hope, which just tells it you've got to, you know, you, you, in this game and as any game, 
there's no excuse for that. You've got to be able to secure the ball at all times. That's a good way to not get future carries. And that was the case as Sean Carson was in on that drive up until that moment down on the goal line. And now Carson, the sophomore, stays in here. Thompson's going to sling it downfield. And that ball is intercepted by John Gibson. The redshirt freshman who's playing in place of the injured star E.J. Gaines with the interception for the Tigers. And you can see the frustration with South Carolina. Gibson played it perfectly, Tess. What he did was he used the sideline as his extra defender. And he forced him into the sideline, got on the inside. Watch this. That is a thing of beauty. Nick Jones was trying to fight for it, but he Gibson does just a perfect job of staying and pushing him back to, to the outside. He takes the inside position. Now, he's going to bail to the outside. He kind of pushes this ball up. See that the footwork? Footwork there was just awful. Now, didn't have his feet set and his weight transfer he jumped into the throw and that could have been good enough except for the play of Gibson on the other end by using that sideline as his defender he gets the third straight possession that ends in a turnover test that defense has been something 15th interception by Missouri that leads the nation, number one in the FBS, 15 interceptions. Henry Josie now, as he's able to square those shoulders, and Josie with a burst of speed. Oh, it's all rolling here in Como. All he wants to do is get this stretch and get to the edge. A nice job of blocking, oh, that's just, that's really well done. 34 yards later, you got yourself another first. And here is Josie, this time just a couple of yards Everett, as he goes back to that right side. But there is a certain energy and momentum here. That fumble down on the goal line, the quick strike, and now the turnover. And you can just breathe it in. Darius White had himself a nice block as the wide receiver, and then also with the other, uh, the Eric Waters, the uh, the tight end, had a nice block to secure the edge. There's Matty Mock now. Here comes Clowney. Good luck with that, as he just takes a seat down at the 34 as Kelsey Quarles corralled him after Clowney was quick to get to that edge. Yeah, but he's got to have a better presence right there. He's got. He was already outside the pocket. He needs to throw that ball away at or beyond the line of scrimmage right there. You can't take this 11 yard loss. Nicely done by Kelsey Quarles right there. 11 yard loss on that play. As there was an injury at the end of that play, that's Kadetrix Marcus, the starting free safety for South Carolina. Featuring so he's pointing down to lower left leg. Take a look at what Jadeveon Clowney has done so far tonight. Well, they've done a nice job of getting him blocked. It's been Justin Britt, number 68. You can see he jumped off sides. They're going to chip him. They're going to make sure they do that. He tried to go for a strip there at the end of that, missed the tackle. Hasn't been a stellar night for Clowney. And a week ago, it's as good as I've ever seen him play. Tonight, kind of pedestrian. That last play when Clowney and Quarles were chasing down Matty Mock was the first tackle for loss by South Carolina tonight. Last week they had 14 against Tennessee. You know, it's been a long time since Clowney has not had the media circus surrounding him. This was a quiet week for him. I'm sure that was welcome. Yeah, absolutely. And he, the spotlight's been shining bright on him for no matter what he does. And so if he does something good, they blow it up. If he does something bad, they blow it up. So, look, the, the guy has outstanding skills. He does some things innately. He just has the ability to do that not very many people at any level can do. 
course earlier this year he took some criticism with the perception that he was not well conditioned and then telling his coaches that he couldn't play due to injury they cleared that issue up but it's what happens when you're one of the most talked about athletes in all of American sports hyper attentive in every way towards J.D. Klein third and 19 now and they're going to play this safe with Josie out of the backfield and Josie's still on his feet and he dives out to try to make that line. It was just a spirited effort to give it a go at the end there as he is going to be marked down at the 50 yard line and the punt team will come out as Chaz Elder was chasing him down. So South Carolina will get the ball back with a little under two and a half minutes. Probably right around the 215 mark, 210 mark. They've got to be able to do something here. They've got to be able to get some points. Even if it's just a field goal, they've got to get on the board. Good point. And coverage unit tried to corral it down there at the 10 yard line. So LaDamian Washington with the highlight of highlights the 96 yard touchdown run sometimes these things just happen when you got momentum and you have a special season brewing you get nights like this you get turnovers down at the goal line you get 96 yard touchdown catches they got a lot of momentum and, and you get young players like Matty Mark stepping up and becoming what they're going to be and so what is he what have we seen through the first game and a half we've seen a kid who has great confidence we see a guy who's not afraid of the spotlight or the situation. You got the third down backed up. Boom, here comes 96 yards. Not afraid to make the throw. And the biggest thing that I've seen so far, Tess, in a game like this is he can make a mistake and bounce back from it. That's important. Minute 55 and two timeouts for South Carolina to work with. Carson, good blocking in front. Actually ran into A.J. Can and then accelerated again as he gets 10 yards there. First down, the clock will stop. They'll move the chains. They've got to string a couple of first downs here together. There's a player down. To That's Bruce Ellington. Answer. That's one of their best playmakers on offense. Now he's been hampered by a foot injury. Played through it last week against Tennessee didn't have any catches last week Ellington with five catches for 69 yards so far tonight but he's an explosive player came into this year as their leading returning receiver and you made the point earlier as how dynamic of an athlete he is a two sports star point guard on the South Carolina basketball team as he is being helped off the field I hate to see that He's got great quickness and, uh, and an ability to find the open hole in zone. Still, he's really good in zone coverage. He knows when to sit down. So Steve Spurrier surely concerned with that, losing Ellington. Basketball coach Frank Martin probably a little concerned as well. Usually gets Ellington after their bowl game each year. Uh, we'll see if he can make a return. Maria Taylor will be on top of that down on the field. If you heard a roar of the crowd here in Missouri, it's because they just announced that the Cardinals were up two to nothing over Boston in the series. Show me state having World Series fever. They got the fifth best team in college football and they got the undefeated Kansas City Chiefs. Not bad, huh? Carson nice move by Carson as he's trying to fight for extra yards picked up about nine there tackled by Penton. So the Missouri defense is just going to be patient and let them gain yards. They don't want to let them get it all back at once with a buck and a half to go here in the first half. Here's Thompson. And that ball was almost intercepted. Bird looked like he stepped out of bounds. And then defensive back coming over and helping on the play. Charging in hard that time was Braylon Webb. And you can see yet another Missouri player is yeah, down at the end of that play. They both won one airborne over the top and one ran through and did himself a nice little flip. I think that was Randy Ponder 
Ponder and Webb to the same side. The Webb is the safety to that side. Ponder's running down the field to the outside. They cannot afford injuries to their cornerbacks. Yeah, they can't afford anything in that secondary. They're very thin. Watch, one's going to go airborne. That's going to be Webb. Ponder runs right through him. Both you see are Webb coming over from the safety spot to ball hawk there. And he took out the top of Randy Ponder. And Michael Sam, of course, always playing a role near the quarterback as he was pressuring Dylan Thompson. Well, he got third and one. Sean Carson. And I don't think he got it at all. Barely got back to the line of scrimmage as it was Michael Sam continuing with his All-America type year. They did not get it. They were one for seven here in the first half on third down. They're going to go for it on a hurry up. Quarterback and State get not it. a chance. They ran up to the line of scrimmage and now Missouri has three timeouts left. 58 seconds to play with and it is served up with a chance to score again. That was Shane Ray getting on top of Dylan Thompson. They tried to go hurry up and watch. Everybody's in all oh, that's really well done. Did you see Wilson number 48? He taps Shane Ray to get back inside and Ray does just that. They come over the top and everybody converges right in the middle. The clock stops for change of possession. Dave Steckel's defense has just played outstanding. So now Missouri, they flip it on South Carolina, and they're the team looking for points before the half. But there is Kelsey another Quarles. big play by Kelsey Quarles. Remember, he had the sack before. Timeout. And Missouri, Missouri will burn one of their timeouts. Leaving 49 seconds to play in this first half as Steve Spurrier rolled the dice. What do you think of that decision there, Matt, moments ago? Well, he rolled the dice, and that's that's one of those things. That's a coach's decision. He knew he needed to get some kind of points before the sling test, and it backfired on him. Short break. We'll come back. Stay with us. Joe Tessitore, Matt Millen, Maria Taylor with you here in Columbia, Missouri. They went for it on fourth down moments ago. Connor Shaw, the better of the running quarterbacks, not in there tonight. It was Dylan Thompson on fourth down and a turnover on downs. And now Missouri, number five team in the country in the BCS standings with 51 seconds to play. And the ball on South Carolina's 36, second and 12. There's Matty Ball. And that was off the hands of LaDamian Washington. So it's third and 12. He threw a fastball that needed to be caught. Mock put it right on his hands. Watch his ball. You gotta make that catch. It doesn't matter if it's wobbling all over the place. Good receivers make those catches. Okay, it's third and 11. They need about six yards to get to where it could be a reasonable kick for their kicker. Watch him in the pregame. He was hitting from about, what do you think about? He was good say? from 48 and in. Okay, and now there's a little game. bit of wind into his face here. It's kind of died down right about now. They need about five or six yards yet. Andrew Beckett's a good one. We'll see if they can give him a chance. Third and 12. On the backfield, incomplete as he was looking for Marcus Murphy. So the ball on the 36-yard line. That would be a 53-yard field goal attempt. Beckett's career long is 46. I, I, I might go for it here. You got 44 seconds. Yep. You're going to punt it to attempt a 50-yarder. And they sent out Christian Brincer, the punter here. Yeah. So let's see if South Carolina it's, dodges it's, a bullet after the turnover on downs. And as they do punt away, and goes with the reverse rotation to make it stab like that. That was well done by Brincer. South Carolina's last four possessions, Matt. Fumble, fumble, interception, turnover on downs. Yeah. And so what does that tell you? That is outstanding defense by the Missouri Tigers. 
Take a look at that drive chart. They really haven't done much at all. They had one series where they had 12 plays. Other than that, this Missouri defense, they really have been. And getting pressure tests with just four guys, which has allowed defensive coordinator Dave Steckel to be able to play coverage behind him and be patient. Mike Davis back out there. Remember the two fumbles earlier. As the clock comes under a half a minute to go here. And what was Missouri's first half that they were looking for. And they got the turnovers, they got the big play, and they got themselves a double-digit lead. Test actually, that was an important carry, believe it or not. Yeah, just to get a little confidence Just to back. get it, just to get it out of the way. Missouri will get the ball to start the second half as they trot off their home field. Homecoming weekend. And what has been a celebration this fall for the Missouri Tigers. Let's go down to the field to Maria. Coach, what caused you to go on fourth down in your final well, last Well, they jumped into a little goal line there, and we shouldn't have snapped it, but we did. Uh, but we've had a couple fumbles. We're not playing very well. But we're only two down, so maybe something good can happen. What's your assessment of Dylan Thompson's play in the first? He's doing okay. He hadn't played in a long time. He's doing fine. Thanks, Coach. And the South Carolina trail 10 zip at the half against UCF. They won that game 28-25. 14-0 holder in against number five, Mizzou, here in Columbia, Missouri. Let's join Wendy Nix, Todd McShay, and Robert Smith back in the studio for the Outback Steakhouse Halftime Report. Here's Wendy in the game. Glad you're with us from Faro Field here at Memorial Stadium. Joe Tessitore, Matt Millen, Maria Taylor. 14 nothing, number five, unbeaten Mizzou. The turnover is such a big story in that first half. Matt, we got a 14 nothing game, and I don't know that you can have a bigger swing moment than South Carolina driving, fumbling down at the goal line. Meanwhile, 96-yard touchdown subsequent to that by Missouri. Huge swing in this game. Absolutely a monster. Let, let me tell you this, frame this. This is a 14 nothing game. This is a lot closer than 14 nothing. This is a, this is a turnover away from being just that. And what we saw in the first half were two big turnovers. First, Golden stripped the ball and was able to stop one drive. And then Hope, he comes up with a strip down inside the five as they're going in to stop another one. And then, of course, the interception on the other end. Three turnovers in the first half for this Missouri team. Very tenuous right now. They need to get this. This is, this is an important series right here, Tess. Missouri will get the ball. Mike Davis, you see there, the star running back for South Carolina. And Dylan Thompson, the quarterback. Davis had those two fumbles lost, one inside the 30, the other at the goal line. Marcus Murphy will be back deep as the return man for Mizzou. And in our kicks away. It's a high, short kickoff fielded at the six by Murphy. And Murphy catches a seam and then stumbles, is just tripped up. It was Landon Ard, the kicker, who had to get Marcus Murphy. Let's check in with Maria Taylor. Well, Gary Pico says that this game is going to continue to be a battle, but he's really proud of his quarterback, Matty Mock, and that he's made some plays, even though he's seen a lot of pass rush. He also wants to continue to win that turnover battle. And guys, I checked in with Steve Spurrier. He says he doubts that we're going to see Connor Shaw here in the second half. Connor Shaw is dressed to play tonight. Had the injured knee against Tennessee, was somewhat limited in practice. Dylan Thompson has gotten the start. Remember, Thompson previously has started two games in his career, had a huge road win at Clemson last year, but he's going to have to dig out of a 14 zip hole here in the second half as they will start with a tackle for loss that is Jadevian Clowney making a statement on the opening play of the second half. Yeah, and he just, all he did was just overpower. Got a great jump off the ball. And then just, I mean, just runs right through Anderson like he doesn't even exist. He, I'll tell you what he does extremely well, Tess. He can attack a half a man naturally. Most guys have to be aware of it. 
He does it innately. Second and 14. Here's Clowney now. Coming in against him, but they get the completion past midfield. It's Jimmy Hunt. As Mark had time and was able to find the junior receiver Hunt. And he got nice protection from Justin Britt, the left offensive tackle who went one on one on the outside. He's been put in that position a few times and he's come through. First and ten. And this time, Matty Mock taking too much time as Kelsey Quarles got to him. You mentioned Justin Britt, the left tackle, who quickly recovered from a torn ACL last November. It was in this point of the matchup with South Carolina last year in the third quarter when he gave up two sacks in just over five plays to Clowney, and he was hungry to get back after him tonight and try to protect his quarterback. Well, his quarterback, while I love the ability, his ability to think he can make every play, the reality is he's got to be able to get rid of the ball sometimes because he's putting his team in bad positions by taking sacks. Second and 19. And that is incomplete as he looked for DGB. Doriel Green Beckham, the big six foot six target, was covered by Victor Hampton. That's that's a great throw to Doriel Green Beckham. That he put it up high. He gave him a chance to come up and make the play. Beckham wasn't quite able to make it. But watch where he sets this ball. This is the perfect spot. That should have been caught. Absolutely. Sets up third and long. Third and 19 for Matty Mock, redshirt freshman, thrown into the fire when their starter James Franklin was injured against Georgia a few weeks back. I'll just keep it with Henry Josie here. Josie gets back to close to what was the original line of scrimmage, tackled by Jimmy Legree and TJ Holloman. The one thing that Matty Mock has not done well has been getting sacked, taking big sacks. He can't put him, his position, his team in those poor positions. On the other hand, South Carolina does a nice job. Kelsey Quarles has come up bigger with a few sacks. Quarles has two sacks. Harold Cooper. Going for the fair catch, and he secures it at the 12. So the South Carolina defense does their job on an opening possession, giving an opportunity for Dylan Thompson in the Gamecocks offense. We haven't earned the respect that we still think we should have. So that's what's making it even more of a challenge, just to keep pushing through and like the sky's the limit for us. People kind of bring up our record from last year, but it's a new year, it's a new team, a new brotherhood. And right now we're just approaching it one game at a time. Respect is not given, it's, it's earned. And I feel like we're still, we're still trying to go out there and earn respect each and every week. Well, they may be close to earning a trip to the SEC championship. This will put them in close range if they can win tonight of clinching the SEC East. Tonight doesn't do it, but it gives them that nice cushion and yet another tiebreaker. Remember, they have the wins against Florida and Georgia, so they already have the cushion. We'll see if South Carolina can test them and make a comeback here in this second half. Trailing by two touchdowns as they start with Mike Davis on the ground. Had those two fumbles earlier tonight. You know, and you watch this Missouri defense. There's one guy who's active all the time. It's Andrew Wilson, their middle linebacker. He's the guy who gets everybody lined up, putting the right checks. Everybody's in the right spot. He moves guys late all the time. And that, that, that guy's the quarterback of the defense, and he does a really nice job for Dave Stecker. Dad Jed was the all-time leading tackler when he graduated from Missouri. And the overthrow is to Mir Bird, does Dylan Thompson. You know, the arms are folded on the head ball coach and doesn't look too happy about his offense. Yeah, he? he had, you know, he had Ponder beat. Bird had Ponder beat, a better throw, that six quit. He got behind Ponder and he threw it out of bounds. You can't waste those opportunities. Just one for seven on third downs tonight are the game pass. Davis and Davis breaks the first would be tackler stiff arms his way cuts back over the 40 that was a great effort by Mike Davis well this is an example of what he does well remember at the start of the game we talked about how he'll run through the first tackle 
This is a perfect shot right there. He's, he should be dead to rights. Instead, 25 yards later, he's got a first down. Davis stays in here. They bring some pressure against Thompson. That ball's in the air, but it's caught. How about that being in the right place that time was Demir Bird. Missouri came with a blitz, the first one and I think of the night. Came off the edge and got there clean. They got pressure right there. The ball's in the air, it's a free ball. Bird comes down, sets up another first down. Went off the hands of the fullback McLaurin and into the hands of Demir Bird. So a first down at the 36 for South Carolina. Thompson slings it almost sidearm that time to Anderson. Well, sometimes you're a quarterback, you have to just find the throwing lane. Now he sees this late and he just kind of almost sidearm slings it. But Anderson's able to come up with a reception. And you got second in about six or so. Second and six. Thompson again. That was incomplete as he looked over the middle to Anderson. The pressure was coming from Michael Sam. Michael Sam, we've talked about him really all night long. He's been consistent. This guy is relentless. Probably not, he's not a very big guy. He's got great effort. He, he knows how to get to half a man, much like you see with Clowney. But this guy's motor never stops. And this is where he lets it go as Michael Sam came into today's game. Tied for first in the country in total sacks. Third and six. Thompson being chased, launches it downfield. And he threw it out of bounds looking Rory Anderson's way. And good coverage by the Missouri Tigers. It sets up this fourth down. Ball's on the 32-yard line. Shane Ray, the fourth member of that rush defense. Guy has got great, great speed. He added pressure all the way through. That offense is staying on the field here. Remember, they rolled the dice on their own side of the field. So here at the Mizzou 32, well, this would no be worries whatsoever. Fourth and six. Head ball coach down a couple scores. Let's see what they come up with here. Missouri sitting in the zone. Look at the time for Thompson. Oh, nice. Launches it to the end zone. And there was a lot of contact down there with Rory Anderson as it falls incomplete as he got tied up with Matt White. Rory Anderson fell over Matt White. And it appears to be a good non-call. That's a second turnover on Downs, Tess. They went for it again. They come up empty again. Thank you. Harpo's here in Columbia, Missouri, over on 10th Street. It was rocking on Thursday night watching the Cards win game two of the World Series. And if this score stays the same way, it may be rocking later tonight. As Dylan Thompson just threw it incomplete. 14 nothing here in the third quarter as we continue Dr. Pepper's road to the conference championships. See so you had his warming up over there and got his helmet on as Connor Shaw. Starting quarterback for South Carolina all season long before tonight when Steve Spurrier went with Dylan Thompson as Shaw had an injured knee coming off the Tennessee game. Matty Mock feeling the pressure as he just tried to get back to the line of scrimmage. Kelsey Quarles once again finding him. Okay. Little flaw you see with Matty Mock show up. He loves to throw the ball down the field, which is great. Takes time. Yeah, it takes time, number one. And number two, there are underneath throws that are presenting themselves that you can't ignore. Move the chains is more important than scoring every time you think you have a shot. Just his second start, the redshirt freshman from Kenton, Ohio. 
Second and ten. Just like you said, and he's lucky that it wasn't intercepted. A flag comes in as it appeared that time that Chaz Elder was playing the ball. Victor Hampton also in there as he was trying to get it to DGB. That's going to be a defenseless hit, I, I believe. Doriel Green Beckham goes up. The safety's going to come from inside out. Mm. If they do, I'm not going to like that. They called it pass interference okay. as we didn't hear the mic of Ken Williamson, the SEC referee. It'll be a first down for Mizzou. They call that pass interference test? That's what we're being told, Matt. Yikes. I see worse. Receivers go three by one here for Matty Mock on first down. And out of the backfield, this is Marcus Murphy. And Murphy was met just beyond midfield that time by Sherrod Golightly and Quarles. Kelsey Quarles. Boy, can he run for a big man. 6'4, 298. Gets after it. Murphy again, short side of the field as he makes a cut and then wiggles his way just inside the 45 yard line. Tackled all three by of, English. All three of those backs, Josie, Hansborough, Murphy, they all have very good runner's patience and vision. We got, a, we got another South Carolina Gamecock. That's now. Kelsey Quarles slow to get up. Who's really had a heck of a game here tonight? He left the Tennessee game last week with a sprained knee. Came in leading the team with sacks. Even with Clowney over there, and you know, Clowney gets double and triple teamed and chipped by running backs and helped by tight ends and quarrels. It's the guy who came in tonight with five sacks. Reminder that later tonight, you got Stanford and Oregon State, number six against number 25. The college football finale is 10:30 on ESPN. And if you're late to the party on Oregon State, folks, Sean Mannion is having as fine of a season passing the ball as anybody in the country is. Yeah, he's been lighting it up. They they have been they've been scoring in punches also. That's a well coached team. Remember, Tess, we had him a lot last year. We really liked the way he plays. It looked like he's taking his game. To the next level. 427 yards a game from Sean Mannion. We'll see what he does against the Stanford defense. And his receiver, Brandon Cooks, has been Ooh, tremendous like to over too. 1,100 yards and 12 receiving touchdowns. So Oregon State will test Stanford later tonight on ESPN. Third down and three and mock to pass. And that is a first down to Lucas. And Marcus Lucas still fighting as he gets a push from Eric Waters extra effort and a first down for Mizzou. I like the play call. John Henson the offensive coordinator. I like that you got him on the edge you rolled him away from Clowney's side and then watch the fight at the end and then here comes and uh, Eric Waters number 81 a little bit of cavalry help gives him a nice little push and a gain of 28. Eric nice Waters throw. comes charging in 6'5", 245 and Lucas is a big guy at 6'5", 220. And now we got Bryson Williams the strong safety for South Carolina as he was injured at the end of that play. Tess lost in that. That's a heck of a throw by Matty Mock. They get him out on the edge and that was a laser that he put on a line. <laughs> You know, Mark only with eight completions on the night for 223 yards on those eight completions. Of course, it helps your, your average helps when you have a 96-yard touchdown throw to Damian Washington. He likes to push the ball down the field. And this is a guy that was used to doing it his entire career. Passed for nearly 19,000 yards in high school. Watch, he's going to get out on the edge, and then he just, he's a nice release. Look at that ball, right on the line, right on the money. 
Two time Ohio player of the year was Matty Mock. Played for his father in high school at Kenton High. Broke so many national offensive records. And Tom Luganbill and Craig Halbert at ESPN, they ranked him as the number 16 quarterback prospect when he came out. As you see, just eight completions, but one of those went for 96 yards. Marcus Murphy is the back. There was some movement up front as each side is pointing to the other. You see Clowney pointing to Copeland. And we will have Ken Williamson clean things up here as the SEC crew confers. Part of the snap, offside, defense number two. The movement by the defense calls the offense to react. Five yard penalty. Seeing Sky Moore. First down. Got the offense to react by his movement. Yeah, that can't be Sky Moore. They, he, he, I think he said the wrong number there. May have said 90 Chess Sutton. Or perhaps Big 52 Philip Dukes there. But bottom line is it's first and five for the Tigers. You know, pistol formation with Marcus Murphy as the back. Bringing the safety off the edge. And here's Murphy. And Murphy gets about two yards that time. Yes, now, there, now that tells you exactly where Matty Mock is right now. He recognized that they were bringing pressure off the corner, but he did nothing about it. So that tells me a couple things. That tells me that they're giving him a play. Once they're calling him a play, it's staying there because he's not getting out of it. You don't want to run into numbers like that. You only get two yards running into that stack box there. Second and three. Pumps goes to the end zone with the fade here. Jump ball. And not a bad target to go for on a jump ball with six foot six DGB, but he couldn't come down with it as Legree and go lightly had coverage. Put it at its highest point, Doyle Green Beckham. He's got to make that catch. Boy, That's he can the get up, but you got to haul it in, right? Yeah, you got. I mean, if you're supposed, if you are as good as he's supposed to be. That's the third catch he should have come down with. Remember, he was the number one recruit in all of college football in that 2012 signing class. Just a physical freak and a tough matchup for defensive backs, but comes up empty there. A little confusion here as to who's out there on the line as the play clock is now under five on third and three. Clowney getting after Mark. And that was a pass defended by Victor Hampton. He's going to take a chance to throw back inside as Clowney's trying is running him down. He needed to get a little more luft under that thing. Some air. And Washington had a chance, but you don't take those chances down there when you have an opportunity to get points. You live for another down. Andrew Baggett has made his last eight field goal attempts. Had a huge game last week against Florida, was five for five. This from 27. And Missouri's going to call a timeout here. Timeout, Missouri. First timeout this half. Test right before, I mean, in that last play, Max Copeland, number 61, he ran out. He ran out, and Anthony Gotti ran right in. And they were completely unsettled. And I believe that carried over into this fourth down. As for the night for Matty Mock, it didn't start so hot as the deflected ball went for a pick. And then he got hot. And then he's, if you look at the, a lot of these balls, these balls, a lot of them, he's throwing down the field. Here's your 96 yarder to LaDamian Washington that put him up by 14. But he's he takes he takes some chances. He's not afraid. You'd like to see him temper that. He needs to learn and understand where he's at with the game. That last one thrown back inside could have been disastrous. It was incomplete. It sets up a chance for this 27-yard field goal attempt. So Baggett comes back out after the timeout from 27. 
And he puts it through. Number five. A lot of people not knowing what to think of Mizzou. You be the judge. 17 nothing lead. Dr. Pepper's road to the conference championships. Let's check in with Maria Taylor, see if we could be having a quarterback change for the game Cox. Yeah, guys, it looks like Connor Shaw has been warming up. He's been doing high knees. He's been throwing the ball. I saw Steve Spurrier walk over to him, say, are you good? Shaw looks at him, shakes his head, and says yes. A couple of his teammates also, Mike Davis, Andre Ellington, they've all come up to him and asked him if he's ready to go back in and said, let's go. So I think we're going to see a quarterback change here. Now, keep in mind, with Connor Shaw going in, first and foremost, he was cleared medically to be able to do this. So this is just not a coach saying, hey, come on, I know you're banged up. Got to get in there. And then Connor Shaw himself has to say, give you the thumbs up whether or not he's ready to go. Right now, it looks like we're going to see him. As Cooper will take the knee for the touchback, and we will check in with Wendy Nix. Joe Tess, thank you. It's a Dr. Pepper 10 conference update, and it takes us to the Pac-12. In particular, Eugene, Oregon, tied up 14 all, but Byron Marshall changes that. Oregon has just scored again. It's now 27-14 on ESPN. So Oregon starting to pull away from number 12 UCLA, as here is Connor Shaw, who last week in the loss to Tennessee was just 7 of 21. As they lost the game 23 21. Spurrier was asking, was making comments about wanting to see him throw the ball a little more, run less. But, you know, Shaw's known as a runner, but we'll see how he's able to move with that knee injury he's coming off of. Last year, he was brilliant against Missouri. He had 20 straight completions against the Tiger at one point. And here is Shaw now running it on his first play in the game. And that's good. See, they got him right away and made him move off the mark. That's what you have to be able to do. Now, this is what happened to him just a week ago against the Tennessee. Just got a little bit bent inside. You can see he holds his left knee right away. And you can see how he went down awkwardly and they got the ice on him. And then he was a bit limited in practice this week, but medically cleared to go. So Dylan Thompson pulled Connor Shaw in. Pressure is on him as he gets it back to the original line of scrimmage to Davis. Well, who Golden. Was tackled by Golden. And Golden is, I, I really like that kid. The more you watch him, he's got a great motor. He's 260 pounds. He's relentless. Big third down right now for both sides of the ball. This Missouri defense has been statistically superb all year long. And they pitch a shutout here. With under six minutes to go in the third, now serving up a third and nine to a new quarterback in Connor Shaw. And Shaw goes downfield and gets it complete to Anderson for a first down. A flag is down. Ball came loose at the very end there, but we will wait on the call from Ken Williamson and the SEC referees here. And Missouri offensive. pointing in that direction. Yeah, the offensive pass interference. Pass interference, offense, number 81. The penalty is 15 yards from the previous spot. Repeat third down. Tess, remember when we said it was a good non call in the end zone concerning Eric. Correct, Eric the penalty is half the distance to the I'm, goal. I'm sorry, third Anderson, down. rather. See him right in the middle there of your screen. Right here. He's going to push off of Wilson right there. And that's what they're going to call. That negated a 20 yard gain and a big first down. Instead, you go backwards and it's third and what do we got here? Third and 23. Third and 2 3. So, 20 yard gain is wiped out. Welcome to the game, Connor Shaw. He's going to launch it and go for it all. And there is no flag there as he was looking for Shaq Rowland covered by Randy Ponder. Ponder and Rowland both fell. But there's a flag. Now there's down. a flag here. Throwing the passer. Defense number 33. 
penalty so, is 15 yards for the previous spot. So the late flag first down. bails out South Carolina as Marcus Golden came in. And it'll be a first down South Carolina. Roughing the passer will advance the ball here for the Gamecocks. And he was fine with the hit. It was that push afterwards that got him the flag. So a first down at the 27-yard line. Boy, is South Carolina desperate to get on the board here. Under five minutes to go in the third quarter as they run it with Mike Davis. That five-minute mark is here. And they could use a scoring drive. Try to get back in this game. Well, Mike Davis is the way they do it, Tess. You get Mike Davis going, and then you work your play action game off that. You need another focus more than just standing back there in the pocket. Mike Davis is your key to getting back in this thing. Shaw taken down. Shane Ray. And that front of Missouri continues with their ways. They have pass rushers. We talked about Golden. We talked about Sam. And now we're going to talk again about Shane Ray to the top. And he just goes right by Corey Robinson. All six foot eight, 350 pounds. Shane Ray, 100 pounds lighter and a lot faster. Third and 14 with a defense that's been able to get all the pressure, which is the four up front most of the year. Leading the SEC in sacks. Underneath he goes to Davis, who is wrapped up and taken down by Darvin Ruiz. Shane Ray had a bit of pressure on Shaw. So it'll be fourth down. The punt team will come on out. This game, if Missouri holds on to win this thing, is on this Missouri defense and Dave Steckel and the game plan that he's put in has been worked flawlessly. Tyler Hole running away and Murphy with the fair catch at about the 25. Coach Steck's defense has been holding strong. Michael Sam and Shane Ray getting the job done for the Tigers. Nothing. Number five, Missouri leads number 21, South Carolina, 17 to nothing here in the third as we continue Dr. Pepper's road to the conference championships. Joe Tessitore, Matt Millen, Maria Taylor with you. This Missouri team so impressive this year. Matt Kenseth, Jimmy Johnson, and lead the chase field into historic Martinsville Speedway. NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Martinsville. Coverage begins Sunday at 1 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. Boy, people, if this is the first time you're tuning in to watch Mizzou this year as you have looked at their scores and watched them run that record to 7-0 and and what a job Gary Pinkle and his staff has done. I think you so far very impressed especially defensively prior to the snap false start offense number 61 five yard penalty it remains first down Max Copeland that left guard again BCS standings are brought to you by Discover card Texas Tech lost today and there is Mizzou the surprise team of college football the BCS standings came out last weekend and all those upsets last Saturday and there they stand number five in the country trying to work their way to an SEC title game appearance that is Russell Hansbrough 
And he's tackled by Clowney. If Matty Mock is going to continue to be their quarterback moving forward, he's going to have to be able to recognize things and try to get out of some place. South Carolina there came with a, a cat blitz off the corner, which is a corner blitz. So what happens is the numbers don't work for you to that side. He stayed in it, and the net result is this. He pitches here to Hansbro. And Hansbro turns the corner and with one burst of acceleration is able to get out towards the 29-yard line. You mentioned Matty Mock and his future. Well, James Franklin, who sprained a right shoulder, could be two to four more weeks before he's ready to return. The senior quarterback, who was having himself a good year, 14 touchdown passes, was injured in their big win on the road at Georgia. Third and seven now for the hotshot redshirt freshman. And here is Mock. Trying to extend the play, and he launches it into his team's bench that time. So they will be punting away on fourth and seven. And that's okay. That's good defense. You got the pressure. And for Mock, that's all right. You just live for another down. You got 17 points behind you. Your defense is playing well. Kick it away. I can't get over this defense. Now they're, they've been playing, they've been playing lights out. Now keep in mind, Connor Shaw is just starting to get his feet under. Him. Windsor's punt is fielded and taken down right away was Cooper. That's good coverage that time by Singleton. Let's check in with Wendy Nix. Joe Tess, thank you. Ohio State, Penn State, this game on ABC. Here's Carlos Hyde running for his second touchdown of the night, and Ohio State making it look somewhat easy, leading 35-7 at the half. Thanks, Wendy. This Missouri defense we've been focusing in on now 38 straight games with a turnover. And 15 interceptions by 11 different players. And Coach Steck with that front four that's been so damaging leading the SEC in sacks sends him back out there against the Gamecocks. And Connor Shaw now into the game for his second series as he pitches to Mike Davis. They pulled Dylan Thompson who got the start. They send in the senior quarterback Shaw, who was injured last week against Tennessee. Test they still there's a lot of time left in this game. The run game is the key. Run the football, establish it, get them biting up, and then start working your play action off it. You have a quarterback who likes to run, but really is banged up a little bit. So right there, that man, he's your key. Second and four. Now to the near side with Davis in that field side. A little extra room to get to the edge, and he does so and picks up the first down. Took a hard hit at the end there. That one hurt. That was Randy Ponder coming in against Mike Davis. You could hear that thud as Davis is taking his time, and he's right there in front of his bench as the medical staff just walks him over a few feet. Watch this. He knows it's coming. Ponder's going down. That's a nice collision. Both guys lowered their head that time, and I know this has been a year where targeting has been talked about so much, but that is not the definition of it there. It's, it's unfortunate the contact was made, but that wasn't the crown of the helmet nor targeting with intention above the shoulder area by Ponder. Here's a first down throw now by Shaw, and he just missed trying to get Adams that time. That's Jarrell Adams, number 89. You're going to get one shot. This is your first shot all night long to make a catch. And guess what? You have to make it. That that's that's inexcusable. At this level, that's inexcusable. So Davis with the helmet off. As Sean Carson is in at running back for South Carolina. Play clock is down to one. Shaw to the near side he goes to Nick Jones it'll be third down he said that he's just starting to get comfortable and you can see it he's getting a feel 
to how this game is being played. They're helping him with the run game a little bit, but now here you are in third and four. This is a big down. And he was wrapped up before he had any chance to even look Parsons way. Marcus Golden's having himself a night. Yeah, and that's that's assignment football. And that all goes back to game planning. If they're going to present themselves in terms of showing any kind of option with the quarterback, every time we've seen it, they've gone right to the quarterback to make the hit. They're setting up with this fourth and four. This little quarter will run out, but they're going to be going for it, Des. End of three. Mizzou, 17 to nothing. Trying to move their mark to 8 0. And Marcus Golden is playing a big part of that effort. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Joe Tessitore, Matt Millen, Maria Taylor here at Faroe Field and Memorial Stadium, where Missouri has been oh so impressive, especially on fourth downs against South Carolina. Gary Pinkle's defense has stepped up two times and forced a turnover on downs. And now trailing 17 0. Connor Shaw on that offense. Going for it here on fourth and four. And they come up with it as Bruce Ellington keeps his balance. For Steve Spurrier to sit there without a point on the board. He was never shut out as the head coach at Florida, Matt. And you got to go back to 2006, the last time South Carolina was shut out. Georgia did it 18 nothing then Missouri's doing it 17 nothing now we'll see if South Carolina can break through on this drive and try to mount a comeback and here is Carson as he drives inside the 35 to the 34. Davis is back in after he took that hard hit. Shaw. Downfield intended for Bird. And it was Ponder with the coverage. Ponder's played a good game here tonight. He's used the sideline to his advantage all night long. He has not allowed anybody to get on top of him. Watch, he saw when the receiver, when Bird looked, he turned and looked. That's really good defense. He had a big fourth quarter interception in that win at Georgia. A walk on three years ago, now a scholarship starter for this prime defense of Missouri. Third and eight. And over the middle for a first down this time. He does get it to Adams. Remember, Adams had the miss earlier. Here he comes up with a big catch. Yeah, and that is a big catch. Right in the middle of the field. Nice protection. He's able to find him. You'll always see somebody over right over the middle of the ball. And that's 17 yards for a first down. Good protection. Nobody around him. Little pressure this time by Mizzou. Shaw to the end zone. And that was beyond the speedy Demir Bird. Tess, this has been really interesting for me with, with the defensive coordinator Dave Steckel. He has not gone to man-to-man -man coverage very much at all. He's relied on his four down. But when he's gotten a short field, 
that's when he's taking a chance and it's smart because you're not going to get beat deep the only way to get beat with speed in the short field is to run long crossing routes and that takes a little bit more time to develop so the blitz then becomes smart down here he can protect some of those younger corners with the open field he's got these tremendous four up front that have been getting plenty of pressure on their own here's a second and ten a little more pressure this time with Wilson and they get to him oh that was Michael Sam and Sam I am an <laughs> All-American this year <laughs> Matt Millen I do believe in Sam I am I what do, a I year. do. <laughs> that's a great call they went again with pressure and here comes Sam all by himself he just beats him clean see how he worked to the top of the man and as soon as he got to the top of the man he got his hips and came right down. That's a big time play and sets up third and long. Michael Sam leads the nation in sacks. Third and 19. He's screaming, watch the screen. And he's right. There it is. Mike Davis blockers in front. Davis, can he get there? Oh, that's a great effort by Mike Davis. He's had himself a difficult night with the fumbles and the hard hit, but that was everything they needed there. You see the shot we took of Michael Sam on the sideline, and he was yelling, watch the screen. And that was a great call, although he couldn't get it referred out in time. When you see that as a rusher, you fall off on all the bats underneath. First and goal for South Carolina. Connor Shaw. Incomplete. As Ellington couldn't stay in that time. They're going to debate whether or not his foot is in. And, and, him six. and it's a touchdown. That actually, Tess, that was a great job of officiating. That's what you're supposed to do. They conferred there. The other judge came in, felt that he had a really good look at it. As look at the foot getting down there, that left foot, as Ellington secured the ball through the catch. And you saw the other official run in there. So here's what happens. The, distance, the official, the official to the top side. Ruling on the field is a catch and a touchdown. The previous play is under further review. Yeah, let me show you. See, stop it right there, guys, if you can. This official right back there, his job is to watch this line, okay? This guy's job right here is to watch the catch. And so his eyes are right here to say, yes, he had control. His eyes are right here to say, was his foot in bounds? Now, he doesn't know in the back whether or not the catch was made. So instead of making an incomplete call or whatever, they go to conference. It's the right thing to do. And See? it's, it's he, exactly how Steve Shaw, the director of officials in the SEC, coached that he coaches them to do just that. That's SOP. That's exactly what you do. But to come together at the end, they'll boo because it's a late call, but it's the right call. That's a great job of officiating. And for Bruce Ellington, remember after the injury, on the drive he had the key reception on fourth and four for 10 yards and now as it stands on the field this six yard touchdown reception John Bible is the replay official who's looking this over and trying to find indisputable video evidence but the call on the field is that it is a touchdown with outstanding work by the back official coming in checking with the headlines been pointing down on the ground and saying touchdown here's Ken Williamson. After further After review, review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. confirmed. Touchdown. That's and that means that, by the way, the video evidence confirms the ruling on the field. But there was no doubt about it. It's a touchdown. And why they have the conference test is because the back judge knows his job, that that foot was in. The side judge knows his job, that the catch was made. Each does not know the other's point of view. So you come together, have the conversation, and make the right call. That's really well done. Very well done by the crew there. And South Carolina, you can take all those historical references to a Steve Spurrier team being shut out and throw them out the window. They have cut the lead to 10. A lot of time remaining here. And Bruce Ellington helped out. Bruce Ellington at the end of a 13 play drive and number five on beating Missouri's lead is cut to 10 17 7 a lot of time left in this one Tess and celebrating its ninth year sponsoring the good hands field goal nets 
Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. And to date, Allstate has contributed more than $3.2 million in scholarship monies. 12-13 remaining here in Columbia, Missouri. The two Columbias meeting up. Boys from Columbia, South Carolina, making their first trip out here to their new SEC East brethren. Joe Tessitore, Matt Millen, and Maria Taylor with you as they squid this to an up man this time. And that is Levi Copeland. And Missouri will have good field position here to start to drive. As Connor Shaw came in to replace Dylan Thompson. And got the touchdown pass there. You know, they've turned to Thompson before, and they had great success with him. Remember, Shaw had the injured knee. Last year, this guy won a game on the road in Death Valley. Rivalry game against Clemson. He's been brilliant when he started before, but this Missouri defense is something this year. And so right now, the South Carolina defense is going to have to do something to the freshman, Matty Mark. One thing we noticed earlier, or I noticed earlier, when they went man-to-man, -man, he did not like to throw into that. I would do a little bit more man coverage. And here's Marcus Lucas. And look at Marcus Lucas as he gets down to the 36-yard line. Combination of things there, Tess. Nice running by Lucas. Poor tackling by the Gamecocks. 29 yards. Well, up tempo now for Ma. As he looks to shake free and extend the play. Instead, he tried to fit it in that time for Lucas, but it goes incomplete. Josie got a good block and he almost had a good run out of it but it was taken down by Gerald Dixon here's Wendy Nix with an update Joe Tess likely one final update from Eugene Oregon has scored 28 unanswered points including this run by Thomas Tyner likely to win 42 14 Derek Carr in Fresno State one of nine remaining unbeaten teams getting set to host San Diego State right after this game here on ESPN 2 Tess Wendy still a lot of football to be played tonight but Oregon sometimes you look up at that score and you shake your head how quickly things can turn when you're dealing with the Ducks offense third and five here and as Clowney is pointing at the tackle and Mock snapped the ball and tried to get rid of it third and five so they're going to move the chains off of that you see the night by Clowney yeah I mean a respectable night but not a night for the best player in college football if that's what he's been billed as and a week ago he was completely dominant and tonight I believe Justin Britt has played him extremely well they've chipped him they've done all the things everybody does last week he found a way to beat it tonight not so ball is that intercepted? They're saying juggling and incomplete as Bryson Williams. A little upset with himself there as he thought he could have called it in. Watch him try to control this ball. Clearly hits the turf there. Well, nice job again by the side judge right there on top of it. Good call. Second and ten. Henry Josie. Gain of maybe three that time. This is two plays ago. They're going to get Henry Josie with a chip on the top, and then Mark knows he's going to get drilled, and Sky Moore. <laughs> he drills him. 
Third and seven. And once again, there was some motion up front. Prior to the snap, offside, false start, excuse me, 65, offense, five-yard penalty. It remains third down. It's Mitch Morse. Played some center in the past. And is now out there flanking the right side. So that'll back him up a bit. All Missouri wants to be able to do, you don't have to get the whole thing here, but put yourself in a better position to try a field goal and don't get sacked. A good kicker in Andrew Baggett. Oh, that was Clowney just getting up in the face of Matty Mock and denying him that time. They tried to slip him with Josie. See, what they were going to do, they put Josie right on him, and Josie slips back underneath him for the screen. See this right here? And then he just tried to slip it back underneath. He had a lot of green, but Clowney comes through. Sets a fourth and 12. He's got that wingspan. Andrew Baggett. Been four for four from this range this year. As this will be from 46, and it would tie his career long. And that is no good. So the South Carolina defense comes up with a stop. Snap was just a little high. They got it down, and the kick straight off to the left. See if South Carolina can get something going here. They've been loving this season here in Columbia, Missouri. The 7-0 Missouri Tigers trying to inch closer to winning the SEC East. And you just got a sense here in the fourth quarter, a little bit of a momentum oh, shift with South yeah. Carolina. Missouri just missed the 46-yard field goal. As Baggett hit it right on the laces and it's straight off to the left and Connor Shaw has come in at quarterback for South Carolina replacing Dylan Thompson and threw a touchdown pass so it's a 10 point margin. Interesting. Missouri is showing a three man rush. See if they don't run at it. They do run option with Mike Davis and he barely got back to the line of scrimmage that was Kentrell Brothers making the tackle. Well, that's not how I would run at it. You have three down, you have five behind, okay? So that's that's an eight man, but what they're gonna do is give you five under. And so you run on the inside at that. Yeah, you don't they, go went, lateral, right? they went to the edge, yeah. Second and ten now. They bring three again against Shaw. And he has to go underneath that time. Ooh. It was Adams wrestling for the ball as he's able to hold on to it at the 34 yard line. Donovan Bonner was there defensively to be third down. See what you do on third down. They have them all spread out. Remember, Connor Shaw, when healthy, would take this opportunity for a quarterback draw and run it. The leg injury last week, third and five. And a flag. flag comes in late. All the way from about 20 yards back in the defensive backfield. That's, I believe this is going to be a good call. Bonner had his hand on the lower. You, you can see it. On Jarrell Adams. Adams, I don't know if he'd have made that catch anyway, but Bonner hooked Pass it. Pass interference here in defense number eight. Benefit from a penalty again to move the chains. It happened earlier. With Connor Shaw in there. On the front side, it looks fine. On the back side, there's the hook. That they're gonna call that every time. Left arm of Donovan Bonner. He's the most experienced linebacker they have. He's played in 40 games in his career. So first down for Connor Shaw. And here's what he's used to doing: running the ball. And he does so well that time, over 10 and a half yards and a first down for the Gamecocks. Now that's a whole, and he comes up limping a little bit, but that's a whole nother dimension.
for this Missouri Tiger defense. If that becomes a factor, you have to account for it, which takes another man out of coverage to be able to have to account for him and his feet. Remember his left knee kind of squatted and crumpled down last week against Tennessee with a man on him. That time came down awkwardly. They set up the screen this time. And here goes Mike Davis breaking free out to the 40-yard line. It's tackled by Shane Ray. Shane Ray saved a big play. Shane Ray came from inside out. He got on his horse, or he might still be running. That's, that is fantastic hustle. All these defensive ends for Missouri can flat out run. See, they came with a blitz. Ray sees it. Watch him. He darts. It's a great play, Shane Ray. Second and five now. Connor Shaw. That is complete. Maybe just short as Shaq Rowland set up shop about four yards downfield. And there is Dylan Thompson all of a sudden warming up after Connor Shaw was limping for a moment. But Shaw has been moving this offense here in this fourth quarter. Can he be the comeback kid? One thing I know about Connor Shaw, he's a tough sucker. And he's not coming out of this game. 22 wins as a starter. Now trying to come off the bench and pull one out of the fire. And Carson's forward progress will move the chains. The three men, three, three down linemen. That's what I expect. You run right directly at it. It's almost like a 3-3. Three, three. Right now, what Missouri is doing, they're sacrificing a little bit of pass rush for coverage. Now they're back to the four down. Shaw slings it over the middle and gets it complete to Adams. And it is going to be first and goal, South Carolina. This is what Thompson couldn't find all night long. That two deep look, the middle deep is wide open. 25 yards later, you got first and goal. Clock counting down under 6.20 to play. First and goal. Connor Shaw has sparked things here. Here's Carson out of the backfield, and he is driven inside the five by Marcus Golson. It'll be second and goal from just inside the four. It's an impressive drive by the Gamecocks. Shaw is the catalyst. He has completed seven in a row. Carson now. Try to lower the pads and get some leverage, but it'll be third and goal. From about the two yard line. And so now if if you're the old ball coach on the sideline and you're going to call this play with a healthy Shaw you definitely make one of the options be your quarterback's legs. With a hurt Shaw I'm not so sure but let's see what he does. Well, you know Shaw has confidence in testing those legs and that run moments ago. Not at 100 percent but cleared to play limited in practice this week and had to come in and relieve Dylan Thompson. Timeout South Carolina. Timeout South Carolina first time out this half desperate times for South Carolina. They fell into a 17 nothing hole and Steve Spurrier and the troops trying to dig themselves out. Network.com for more information. Last Saturday in this dominant league, it was filled with upsets and thrilling finishes. South Carolina would like to keep that form here and cut into Gary Pinkle in that 10 point lead of Mizzou. Third and goal. Connor Shaw pressure on him. He just had to get rid of it. That was a great call. Flag is down. That ball was far out of the side of the end zone as Gary Pinkle is claiming as well but brothers was all after Connor Shaw there Pentrell brothers because that was a great call by Dave Stecker he anticipated exactly what we said no foul for pass interference the ball was not catchable good call by the officials it's fourth down what's so the pressure that they brought he's expecting play action off the edge and the legs of Matt of uh, of Connor Shaw which is exactly what they do 
and Brothers is able to get the pressure. He has to get rid of the ball, and that negates the call. That was great anticipation of what was going to happen by Dave Steckel. So here comes the true freshman, Elliot Fry, who turned down a scholarship from Louisiana Tech because he wanted to play for South Carolina. He's a walk-on kicker trying to make it a one-possession game. And he nails a 20-yard field goal. 5.03 to play. Just a touchdown lead now for Mizzou. College football primetime as you're watching the SEC on ESPN. Joe Tessitore alongside Matt Millen. And down on the field is Maria Taylor. And we've got ourselves a ball game as South Carolina has come back. The head ball coach yanking Dylan Thompson at quarterback, sending in Connor Shaw. And the Missouri defense has been impressive as they've been all year long, just holding South Carolina to a field goal when they were knocking on the door of the end zone. But still, it's down to seven. Mizzou unbeaten, 7-0, the surprise team of college football. But can they hold on here at home? Here is Marcus Murphy. And Murphy barrels his way out to the 25. FaceTime profile brought to you by Edward Jones. A closer look at Michael Sam. Well, he started early and he hasn't stopped. He's given pressure up inside. He's been big in the run game. Every time they've dropped back, he's gotten pressure. Now, however, is going to be the time for real FaceTime. Sam's got two tackles for loss, a sack, a couple of hurries. Four tackles. Now's the time when great players have to make great plays. And so now will be the time for Sam to really step up. Henry Josie. He's barely touched until he got to the 30 yard line that time. Junior Pick running back has been their inspirational story. We'll see if they lean on him here as the clock ticks down and they try to use some time and bring this thing in for a nice landing. Catastrophic knee injury back in 2011. Had to work so hard to get back to this point. Second and five. Big Jadivion Clowney. See if he can come up with something here. And instead, it's Josie. And he's going to be about a yard and a half short as Kelsey Quarles continues his good night on that defensive front for South Carolina. Chelsea's got himself 80 some yards. None, out, none of them matter. South Carolina. This third second down. Timeout this, half. this is what matters. This is a 30 second timeout. So a timeout called. It'll be third down and two. This is an interesting game because really in the first half, I mean, turnovers got the best of South Carolina. They were bringing it in. Mike Davis, their star running back, some think the best running back in the entire SEC. He fumbled going in on the goal line. Missouri had the swing moment of the night a 96 yard touchdown pass the other way such a swing moment like that in now a game that's a one possession game on the line kind of game Huge. and so Tess here's the whole deal all that game that's transpired erase it doesn't matter doesn't make a bit of difference right now the biggest play of the game is going to be this third down right here whether they can get the first down or whether they can stop the first down there's enough time to be able to take the ball in for a touchdown for uh, for South Carolina and conversely you have to be able to eat more clock if you're this Missouri team this is a huge play right here third and two and it'll be Josie they come after him he never had a chance that was Victor Hampton and Sherrod go lightly and it seemed like the entire defensive line of South Carolina in the backfield of Mizzou you said go lightly in Hampton those are secondary people what does that tell you they brought a blitz they brought a blitz off the corner anticipating a run a great call by Lorenzo Ward the defensive coordinator for South Carolina had nowhere to cut back because Clowney was tracking him down that's just a great job of Hampton of coming off the edge and setting up this fourth down. 
So Christian Brinser is going to come in to punt away. And he'll take every second down on that play clock as Farrell Cooper is back to return. It's a low punt that bounces just inside the 40. Let's go down to the field to Maria Taylor. The guys, defensive coordinator Dave Steckel was telling his team, you have to be smarter, tougher, and play faster for longer. Those are the words that he gave him as they left, and Michael Sam stood up and said, we are great, let's go. Just reminding his team to have confidence as they head on the field right now, guys. Remember, Coach Legal Steck there. The kicking team, the ball will be awarded to the receivers at the spot of the touching. First down. So we're going to mark this properly there where it was touched there on the coverage. Michael Sam, who's having an All-America kind of year came into tonight leading the nation in sacks Missouri as much as you hear about the offense through the years and all those tall receivers it's been that dynamic defense that has led the way to this undefeated mark and number five in the country standing in the BCS but can they hold on will this defense do it one more time 308 to play in South Carolina with a chance and Shaw throws it just beyond Anderson. That's a nice job by Wilson. Did a really nice job of falling back to the inside. That's where Shaw has been hurting him. They're playing that two deep zone. The middle down, the uh, deep middle is what has been hurting them with the tight end. And Wilson did a nice job of falling back into that. Team captain, the middle of that talented defense. And now a second and 10. South Carolina trailed 17 nothing entering the fourth quarter now trying to come all the way back Shaw this time it's a diving effort by Bruce Ellington great job by Ellington and again the same spot that they're attacking Tess it's the deep middle there's no one there it's a void they're spreading the field the two safeties are spread they're getting to the middle Missouri's got to get a defender right down the middle. Ellington is over 100 yards receiving. Here's the screen now. Mike Davis, blocker in front. Another first down for the Gamecocks. Spurrier has him off balance. Missouri doesn't want to go to man. They're afraid with the speed of the outside receivers and their, and their own defenders. So they're sitting in a the kind of a, just a soft zone. And they've been able to hit the holes. Good. Another first down pass by Sean. Now he tucks it, runs it, and he slides down. Remember, he's dealing with that knee. He's got the brace on the left knee. He was knocked out of the game last week against Tennessee. Limited a bit in practice this week. Dylan Thompson started the game. And then the head ball coach pulled him, put the veteran normal starter back in, and Shaw has led the comeback been a completely different team with Shaw at quarterback. A spirited team. A team that believes. Second and four. Pressure. Here's Shaw. Gets it complete and gets the first down by way of Mike Davis yet again. Shaw's pass complete to number 28. Mike Davis. Remember earlier when Missouri had a chance to create a cushion. Watch laces, laces were out on the hole. See that right there? And Show Baggett the pushed it off to the left. They could have had the cushion. Instead, their defense has to hold. First down screen again. Davis again. Blockers in front. And he's down to the one-yard line. Second consecutive series. Same situation. Same play call. Same result. First and goal. The look of worry. Davis. He is stopped. About a half yard into the backfield as Marcus Golden continues to play well. As we come to the one minute mark. Second and goal. South Carolina timeout remaining. Trying to tie this game against undefeated Mizzou. Smart by the old ball coach. Here's Shaw now sprinting to the near side, to the end zone. Touchdown, South Carolina, Nick Jones. 
Same concept as the last time where he threw it out of bounds. Uses Shaw's legs to buy time and stretch the field. You force a defender to have to account for Shaw, and then what happens in the, in the secondary, it stretches your, your uh, coverage. Nobody's on the coverage with Nick Jones. The Throw true kick. freshman kicker now, Elliot Fry, to tie this game. Walked on this summer. And welcome to what is seemingly every prime time in the SEC. We are all tied here in Como, 17-17. Nick Jones, five foot seven junior, who went up and got it. 17 fourth quarter points for Steve Spurrier. He had the feeling, he went to Connor Shaw, and it paid off. And after a big college football Saturday like this, you can get your NFL Sunday started the right way with Sunday NFL countdown at 10 a.m on ESPN we're going to talk about the recipe for an amazing turnaround just west of us in Kansas City with Alex Smith Andy Reid and that defense out there for the unbeaten Chiefs and then it's fantasy football now starting at 11 a.m. on ESPN 2 as 42 seconds remain here as you look at Steve Spurrier I'm always struck by one thing you know he's not a guy with cards and all that stuff he he's a guy who calls play off of instinct he's a gut guy and I've always believed this firmly I'll never stop believing it the best play callers they go off of feel and he's got feel that was a great call at the end there the score he sure does he was born with it and they'll take the touchback 42 seconds, 17, 17, 17 unanswered points in the last 11 and a half minutes. As Matty Mock, the redshirt freshman, just his second start, came in at Georgia when James Franklin was injured last week, was solid against Florida. And can he put Andrew Baggett in position? A long of 46. Pre game warm ups, he was hitting from 48. He was good from 48 in pre game. He's going to walk this dangerously for Marcus Murphy, who was taken down right away. That was Kawan Lewis tracking that play. And they're letting this clock tick right down. They got two timeouts remaining, and they're letting that clock count down towards the end of regulation here. Okay, I think this is a good idea, and here's why. You, just a freshman, he's had a decent night, not a great night, hasn't been very accurate. Defensively, you've been on the field a whole bunch, especially in this fourth quarter. You're better off as a defense with a short field in overtime because you don't have the speed on the outside. Great you point, can, Matt. You could use the short field to your advantage. A little more manageable. But this was it moments ago. Nick Jones tying the game. Let's check in with Wendy in the studio. What a night here, Wendy. Joe Tess, it never fails when you've got the call. South Carolina, Missouri tied up, and that means Fresno State, which enters the week at number 17 in the BCS standings, trying to remain undefeated, set to kick off against San Diego State. Right about now, this game will begin on ESPN News. We're back right after this. So glad you're with us for a little SEC primetime overtime with it all on the line for number five Mizzou alongside Matt Millen and Maria Taylor. I'm Joe Tessitore and this is moments ago on the sideline. That is LaDamian Washington. 
the emotional leader of Missouri. He's taken on a big leadership role this year. He was forged himself by a tough family backstory, raised by a single mom who passed away of a heart attack when he was in high school. He had to instantly grow up as the head of his household. And tonight, he had the play of the game for Mizzou, a 96-yard touchdown reception. over the options with Ken Williamson and you know it folks by now the overtime rules you want the last at bat you want to know what you got to do match play it is as the overtime records for these two programs Carolina's never won an overtime game Mike Davis he had a tough first half with a couple fumbles lost, one down at the goal line. But he was a part of that bounce back there in that last drive in the fourth quarter. A few screen passes he turned upfield. Moved the sticks for the head ball coach who's trying to knock Missouri from that pedestal of the unbeatens. Gary Pinkles had such a special year, and this has been such a tough week in the passing of his mentor, College Football Hall of Fame coach Don James, with all the success he had in Washington and Pinkle was his offensive coordinator there tomorrow morning Pinkle's going to get on a plane fly out to Seattle and speak at the services but for now he's looking for just one last moment of inspiration and good luck Fresno State and San Diego State will be starting on ESPN News and then we'll get to it after we're done here at Faro Field at Memorial Stadium Overtime it is with Missouri, unbeaten Missouri on offense first. Empty set for Matty Mock, the redshirt freshman quarterback. Quarterback draw, nice call. Design run, blockers in front, really good call as Mock has a first down near the 13 yard line. Smart call by Josh Henson, offensive coordinator for Mizzou. Spread him out. They tried to get Clowney to define himself up the field, which he did. He tucked underneath it. Murphy now joins Mark in the backfield on first down. Sean Blitz. Pump fakes, runs again, and he was upended that time. That was Williams who went low on Matty Maul. Things happen in the red zone a lot faster. Your angles change for a quarterback. I think right now for Maul, it's really difficult to see down here. You have to be really accurate with your throws. If I'm South Carolina, and I'm Lorenzo Ward. I tighten my coverage, make the windows even tighter. Second and seven. Marcus Murphy, he scored here before, and he is forced out short of the goal line. That was Victor Hampton coming in. But it'll be first and goal, Mizzou. They got that edge. There was a heck of a block over there. I couldn't see quite who it was, if it was the tight end or not. But you're first and goal inside. Was similar to the play he scored on earlier. Here's Murphy again. And easily on the edge. And Mizzou does their job in the first overtime. As South Carolina will have to match. Trying to stay unbeaten and have this dream season continue. Only took four plays, and Murphy caps it with his second touchdown of the night. That's well done by Britt. Justin Britt on the outside, Max Copeland on the outside. They secured that whole side. And Baggett does a good job of lifting it up and in. So Steve Spurrier 
And South Carolina must get seven. There's Green Beckham. Look at Britt, 68 right there. Copeland, the inside. Just that little bit allows him to get to the outside. That's that's not a good job defensively. You got to know, your Marquise Roberts, you have to hold the edge. You can't give it up. What a comeback it was for South Carolina. Remember, they trailed 17 0 to start the fourth quarter. Connor Shaw came into the game. He found Bruce Ellington that made it 17 7. Then Elliott Fry, the true freshman, cut it to a touchdown. Then in the final moments, there's 42 seconds to play. It was Nick Jones and the head ball coach. Boy, he made the right choice, didn't he? But now, one more time, Shaw has to step up and deliver. And that was a relief there, those four plays to score in the first overtime for Missouri in that fourth quarter. They only had 38 yards to South Carolina's 168 total yards. So here's Shaw, injured a week ago against Tennessee, sitting on the bench for three quarters tonight and called into action to be the hero. South Carolina has to have seven to force a second overtime. And that's a good start with Bruce Ellington. It's a great job by Shaw. Outstanding patience. He wasn't looking to run. He was looking to draw the defense and spread that coverage, which is exactly what he did. First and goal. Mock looks on. Will he need to go back on? They're messed up on the top of coverage. They got trips to the top. See him talking and Missouri's still talking it over. Yeah, that's not good. See if Shaw looks that way. Quarterback Design draw. quarterback run. And he is chased down by Michael Sam. The guy who may be having the best year of any defensive end in all college football. Again, it's an inside move by Sam. He takes a hard inside move. Watch him. This is a stunt. He just follows all the way through. The real key is by the tackle. He takes the block away. Sam comes clean, and it sets up this big second down and goal. Look at the night by Sam. Came in leading the nation in sacks as well. Second and goal. Walks that away. It'll be third and goal from the 15 yard line. Good coverage. They contained him inside. So now, if you're South Carolina, you want to use the feet a little bit of Shaw, and you want to try to get to the middle of the field. That's where they had their success test. And so defensively, you have to think the same thing. I have to get a defender down the deep middle. They're playing a cover two zone down here. You have to get it to fourth down. Third and goal. South Carolina has to have seven to push it to a second overtime. Shaw with time to the end zone. Going up for it, but incomplete to Nick Jones as he was covered by Randy Ponder. And here comes the ball game. All those plays that happened prior to this mean nothing. If you're going to make a play, now's the down to do it. Will the dream season continue for Mizzou picked to finish sixth in their own division their fifth in the country undefeated for now fourth and goal from the 15 here it is folks they did it Bruce Ellington they're an extra point away can you believe this Connor Shaw with a little magic that is a fantastic job by Shaw and a great route run in the concept. 
outside receiver goes inside, inside receiver just goes back to the outside. All you're trying to do is gain leverage on the defender, and he does just that. Great job of protection. You come from inside out. Ellington beat the inside receiver, and here's the extra point. And Elliot Fry, the true freshman, the walk-on, who earned a starting job just this summer, sends us to a second overtime. Bruce Ellington's second big fourth down reception tonight. This one extends the game. Amazing effort by Connor Shaw here to come in off the bench and throw three touchdown passes. That one on fourth and goal backed up to the 15 yard line. What Ellington was trying to do was just gain leverage on the defender. He's the inside slot receiver. So you take the outside receiver and you draw that defender back to the inside. And then Ellington's whole key is to get that defender on his inside hip. So when he breaks, you have nothing but field to throw to. He did it flawlessly and it was six quick. What a night here in Columbia, Missouri. Joe Tessitore, Matt Millen, and Maria Taylor with you on a night when Missouri had everything going their way through three quarters. They had a 17-0 lead. Their defense was playing the way they played all year long, forcing turnovers, getting pressure with that dynamic four up front. Dylan Thompson, the quarterback for South Carolina, was struggling. And then the head ball coach, Steve Spurrier, said, time to go in a different direction, boys. And he turned it over to Connor Shaw. So Missouri's name for now is still up there among the last of the unbeatens. Keep in mind, so much on the line, on the big picture. A team trying to inch closer to an SEC East title and an SEC championship game. They've got that cushion already with the wins over Georgia and Florida, but to take down three ranked teams in a row. What a task that is. Hasn't happened for Mizzou since all the way back in 1939. So they change ends of the field. And now South Carolina on offense first. There's Shaw. And he threw it low at Ellington's feet. One of the keys on the touchdown pass to Ellington also was they knew exactly where Michael Shaw, uh, Michael Sam was. And so they did they did a nice job of chipping him. And the back made sure he did not get any kind of a rush and secured that edge. Been an emotional week for Gary Pinkle. Now being pushed here in our second overtime. Second and ten. Shaw. He's looking at Davis out of the backfield, and Davis juggled the ball for a moment and then was wrapped up that time by Brantley and Randy Ponder. And you can see Davis is slowly trying to just crawl his way over to his bench that time. He is in a lot of pain as the medical staff is tending to him. And the officials are holding up the game as they deal with Mike Davis, who's had a difficult night. Oh, oh man, that is hard to see. Yeah, he is. We apologize for the graphic nature of that replay, but Mike Davis, seriously, a serious injury there. It just looks really uncomfortable. That was unbelievable scene. Thank goodness he's up on his feet. So hard to see these young men suffer at times the way they do, but good to see him up on his feet. 
It's a great hustle play by Harold Brantley, number 90 from the inside out. Another good young defensive lineman for this Missouri Tiger defense. Sets up a big third down. Keep in mind, the kicker for South Carolina is a young one. The kicker for Missouri has a little experience. Third down and seven. Here's Shaw now on third and seven. And he threw it behind Rory Anderson. Which is where they wanted to get to, Tess. We've been talking about that. The whole fourth quarter and into this overtime, these overtime periods, the middle of the field is what they were exploiting. Shaw tried to get there one more time, but missed. Throw it behind Anderson. Sets up this field goal attempt of 40 yards. Pressure moment for the young man. This attempt from 40, he missed earlier tonight from 40. And he puts it right through. Good for him. So Missouri knows what their task at hand is. The first lead of the game for South Carolina. Remember in the first overtime, Missouri decided to run the ball. And where did they run it? Right at Jadavian Clowney. He ran a quarterback draw up inside and then two consecutive runs by Josie to our, uh, on the left side was able to get the six. Jadavian Clowney. Big moment for the big man. Second overtime. The All-America, the guy who finished sixth in the Heisman, who set the school record with 13 sacks a year ago and took a little criticism earlier this season. Well, now's the time. And back to the ground is Marcus Murphy. Look at him weave his way inside the 10. Where did he run the ball, Tess? Right at Clowney. Went right at it. Marcus Murphy used that great quickness and vision, and they got some good blocks on the left side. It's Justin Britton. Copeland over there sets up first and goal. Touchdown wins it for Mizzou. They always have the safety net of tying the game, but here's first and goal with eyes on the prize. Murphy again. This time, nothing to be found with Chaz Sutton riding him down. Lorenzo Ward is rolling the dice a little bit, the defensive coordinator for South Carolina. That time he dropped his safety down, and he came with more pressure off the edge. Down this way, just go left. A couple weeks ago, Matty Mock, the quarterback, was watching James Franklin have a great year as a starter. And now just the second start for the redshirt freshman. Here comes pressure again. There Let's see is. if they bring it. They do. Second and goal. Mock looking to right. extend the play. And he's got to throw it away. It'll be third and goals. It was Chaz Sutton getting after Matty Mock. There was no receiver there, Tess. He threw that thing. He at or beyond the line of scrimmage is the rule. He was outside the pocket, and that's why they allow it. Not much has been asked of Maw with that lead he was sitting on. Only four completions in the second half in overtime. Quarterback draw here. Third and goal. Maw pressured. Comes to the near side. Tucking, running, and scooting out. So it'll be fourth down. And they will try to tie up this game with Andrew Baggett, the sophomore. He's been in pressure situations before. He had the game winner in four overtimes at Tennessee last year.
This attempt from only 24 yards out to send us to a third overtime. Oh, no! Oh, yes! He missed it. If you're a South Carolina fan, game over. I think uh, laces again served up to Baggett. It is off the post, and it is off the rails for the dream season for Mizzou. Baggett off the goal post in a dramatic comeback for South Carolina. They trailed 17 zip and roared back for the upset. Bag it from 24 yards. And watch the hold with Webb. Laces right into the shoe. You know, kickers, when they see those laces, they just get that little moment. And that foot wraps around and pups and spoons it right at that part of the ball. And the head ball coach. Oh, is he loving that? South Carolina pulls it off in an overtime thriller. And for Gary Pinkle, denied 8-0. Let's go down to the field. Maria is standing by with Steve Spurrier. Coach, saw your face as that ball bounced off the uprights. How would you describe the ending of this ball game? Well, we stuck it up just about the whole ball game, and in the fourth quarter, uh, I guess we tied it up and got into overtime somehow. So anyway, good luck to you guys. And uh, I guess it's meant to be. I believe the good Lord was smiling on the game cards. But we didn't play very well, but Connor Shaw brought us back. Guys made some catches. I don't know how it happened. Well, 17 fourth quarter points, how it happened. What made you choose to put Connor Shaw well, into the game? we had to put him in. We had to put him in. Dylan was a little overthrowing, but Connor said he could play, so we had to go with him. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Coach. Okay, thanks, man. Connor Shaw came into the game 646 in the third. Nothing was going right. And all of a sudden, he produces 27 points. And Missouri is going to drop like a rock. They got all the way up to number five. And then in the second overtime, Baggett off the upright. Stay tuned for ESPN College Football Finale, Fresno State, San Diego State. For Matt Millen and Maria Taylor and the entire crew, I'm Joe Tessitore. A fun one here, but the dream season stumbles for Mizzou.